Welcome, everyone, to this episode of The Fall, run by not only, but Mia, playing with the fire. Sit down, relax, enjoy, have a drink. Listen on in. And we will not have a recap, as I say so. And you all sit. Can you get your earphones? Um, and you sit in front of Kurt's hut. It's night. The street lights have been been lit by the Hippen Ochre well collaboration. Um, you sit there, a shadow of a orc female gets larger as she walks towards the four of you. She's wearing a simple linen tunic held up by a brooch. The rich child is still clinging to the bottom of the tunic. A head is lowered towards Apitax as she walks by towards the temple tower. Her gaze lingers on all of you, lowering her brow, showing her worry. And you can start with character descriptions. And so, Apitax sits there, having just looked over to that, to that woman, just nodding in approval, looking at her, and turning back to you all, uh, not wearing my, my hood at this point, but I am an orc, broad shoulders, standing about a little over about six and a half feet. But I am sitting down at this point. Where am I sitting down? Well, on the ground, on the dirt, in the grass, before the fire. Sitting, more, more kneeling and squatting, a mixture of that. I sort of move now and then as I move my long, sort of ropey hands, my very uh, thin sort of fingers. Um, my, ha my, my hands are not <clears throat> one of the calloused and worked hands of a farm orc, but of a learned individual. Uh, my skin, similar to the image there, has... Mm, Though perhaps there are other orcs that have more of a greenish uh, coloration, dirty sort of greenish coloration. My my skin tone is almost looks a bit sickly. It's it's a greenish, but more an acidic green color to it. Almost a little bit a little bit more paler. Further noting my time that I spend above ground in the sun. There I sit. Very uh, pronounced features to my face, you know, my cheekbones, my my eyes, my brow, my heavy brow. Uh, very cut uh, cut hard into my features, showing deep shadows. My beady eyes looking out from my heavy bridge. The, the flame sort of flickers and the shadows and makes my face look almost skeletal in uh, appearance of this light. But I calmly just speak uh, to you all as uh, the flame pops and cracks and the moons look down silently. It's staring off into the fire as it dances and crackles is Arkova. A large ogre, hunched over at the moment, playing his mandolin as he strokes gently upon their 
creating a tune, his mind wandered off as the sound that he creates flows from one ear and out the other, and into the ears of all those passing by. Like all ogres, he has no hair, and his skin is blood red, of a deep shade of crimson. There's an especial smoothness to his skin, and a beautiful countenance that shines, especially in the ember light of the fire dancing off of his bare skin, wearing only a large kilt-like belt wrapped around his waist with a metal piece that is shined in the middle. He sits there playing his mandolin, and as his head is tilted over, his brow is slightly furrowed in concentration and bits of what can be seen as black uh, ink tattoos from the from his forehead all the way around into the back of his head and then all over parts of his body. They litter and trail, almost like geometric lines they flow about, outlining some of his particular muscular features as his impressive form delicately plucks at the strings of the mandolin, creating various tunes to be heard. He glances up only occasionally to see into the depths of the fire itself, the embers bouncing off of his eyes as he looks into them and then back to the mandolin. And sitting there, the lord of this squalor, the lord of this dilapidated hut, is Kuro known by some as the liar. He is a kitsun, a fey creature, long pointed ears, angular features, an attractive face, uh, almond-shaped eyes of a, of a reddish color, predatory features, and sprouting from his back as one single white fox tail, his hair equally snow white, his skin a bit pale, uh, offsetting those those reddish eyes even more. He wears robes of, of umber and orange and also the tan of, of supple leather. They are uh, well-worn, they are weather-worn, but they are robes that are uh, have been purchased by someone who is uh, attempting to give the air of opulence. Whether or not that is succeeding remains to be seen, but he smiles, sitting cross-legged, uh, amongst his friends, uh, having taken a seat on the ground to emulate Apatax in his bizarre orcish manner, but he's feeling at one with the ground today, and he is enjoying a brew, a brew of a uh, of weak grassy tea that he is he has passed about, and his tail swishes back and forth, obviously pleased to have such company, to be uh, to have them in his manor house as it were, this thatched roof cottage that he sits, and he sees an orc approaching, not entirely unusual, as he lives a bit in the outskirts of town where the, uh, the orcs are more prominent. And he has seen many an orc, for he has some skill in the art of the magi, specifically that of the oracle, ones who can see beyond sight and see the future. I stand tall and proud, the face of beauty etched in flame orange locks. My eyes dance with lustrous flame, my skin silky and pure, angular features with perfect symmetry. I am beautiful beyond your imagination, and still be more beautiful than that. Yet I can pose the form of the apex predator, the hunter, the one to be feared with the long, gleaming, perfect white teeth, the swayed back, pointed ears, to hear everything, my nose constantly moving, twitching, noting every sin before me, judging the worthy and the hideous both. My hair is long, 
and slightly feathered, my body adorned in leather garments that don't quite fit the beauty of my station. Clearly, I am some sort of king or god, yet I am dressed in far too pedestrian of attire across my back an <clears throat> obsidian bastard sword rests when unsheathed it is written upon silver runes in the language of the thousand faced one I stand with sacks and bags and purses all containing vials and dried herbs, crushed petals of flowers, mortal and pestle, small knives and little hammers, many things for distilling the essences from that which I find delightful, and so they may be used to reinvigorate the world around them in perfect beauty. And soon after, ten minutes perhaps, you see her again. Her shadow, she's not alone anymore. The keeper follows her. The one so high in the temple of the Fraxu. Another female orc, larger. She carries a wooden club, which you can see is a perfect Auto, in perfect orthogonal shape. The, to the toga she's wearing have fine embroidery around the neck. And you can see the white toga contrast of her dark green skin. Not quite of that acidity. She has several piercings in her skin around the mouth and collarbone. And Yukuro have been told that many are temporal spirits waiting to follow her command. She has one look at you, Eros, not stopping her slow movements. Then she moves ahead again, walking towards the gate of the orc community, slowly. Both of them. This is, of course, a little away from Kuro's hut, but as we know, he follows the main road. I've been meaning to ask. I'm, I'm saying in Pelicanese, uh, you know, as I'm sort of looking at the dirt a bit, sort of casually sort of moving my hand, you know, my, putting my fingers into the dirt and into the, feeling the grass. I'm not really looking at you. Um, Arkova, but I'm speaking to you in Pelkanese. I had been wondering, meaning to ask if you knew why those children of steel were upon that lake of decay. Do you know, I look up at you, do you know why? His head tilting and meeting your gaze looks upon you. No, I do not know why they were there. All I know is that they came upon us with swift force. We were brought to chains and then made to pull out bones from the lake. A short-lived exercise, I assure you, for we made our escape. But other than that, I know nothing else of their reasoning or why. I nod at you. He, turn, he turns his attention back to, to lightly playing again. Your homestead, Kuro. Yes. I'm speaking Sindarian. Your homestead, strong, 
still stand well. You make? Uh, no, no, I... I suppose you would say I in inherited it after the previous inhabitant. I'm not sure exactly who he was, but he was uh, ousted from the community for being a, a ne'er-do-well, a vagabond, a thief, and I believe he was a satyr, judging from the, uh, I must say, pr provocative woodblock carvings that I found underneath the bed. Uh, those those were sold off to the satyrs for their, uh, well, they paid a high price for such things, and that allowed me to furnish my, my surroundings in such a way. And I, and I point to like a, you know, sort of a, a shoddy, you know, little shelf that's, <laughs> that's been uh, assembled, and there's, there's some clay pottery on there. I look at that. And then I look at you. You give much copper for this, or only small wood to Seder? Oh yes, yeah, so some of the I interior was was traded for the woodblock carvings. The rest, well, when I informed the uh, the local guard of the the nasty activities of the nasty man who used to reside in this abode, they uh, carted him off. And as a reward, I, a simple traveler, someone with uh, nothing to their name, was given this home, and uh, now. I have a residence, a place to call my own, and I and I reach up, and I, I sort of like try and smooth smooth over some like a, a leak that's coming in from the thatch roof. I'm like, uh, uh. Mm. And I look at arrows. You <laughs> leave the swing. You stay here. Uh, I am momentarily in this residence. Is that the right word? I look at arrows. Mm -hmm. Yes. We shall see what time unveils. Arkova I do not think, and I'm speaking in Pelicanese, I do not think Kudos home will own you. There are other uh, hearths to heat yourself, yourself warm, cold nights. House of Contemplation. I enjoy this. Perhaps... It it, it takes a bit of a moment, but um, he kind of he kind of glances up as if uh, lost in thought. He'll, he'll, when he meets your eyes, he goes, "House of contemplation. Uh, mm. What is this?" I know this. I go this uh, much more than swing. It is calmer. Many ogre come here, like I say before. Only know one tongue. Only know one way. It always leads to pain. I think this will help you. He has a puzzled look on his face and looks back at you. Oh, I speak quite a few tongues. Yes. You are not like other ogre. You know tongue Thraxa. You know what ogre translate to. Hmm. If you forgive me, this is all I knew your people as. Kind of stares back down, his eyes are meeting in the fire, and as he does, it is all right. There are many people in this land that know us by many names. Beast, 
one of them. They see us nothing more as brutes, but they'll be more than willing to use our bodies to do the labor for them. It seems everybody needs an ogre around. I guess that is our price, in a way. <laughs> I just make do with what I have. And he continues to play a little bit. Before night is over, you go to the house of contemplation. See if you find rest there. Stay there for a time until better residence for your stay here. Flame down. Uh, I will. And in Thraxa, he will say thank you, but it will come out very... Th thank you. I look at him and I just nod slowly. Pull back. Uh, no, as you're sitting there, I'm sorry, I have some internet problems. <laughs> uh, you see, uh, no, uh, a leather clad figure shows in the street strolling beside the keeper. The leather is stark but with swirling patterns of yellow decorate the armor. An ebony bow is slung over his shoulder. Characteristic high neck collar and facial tattoos reveals the slender figures to be Hansa Kuhn, leader of the Forest Watch. He's standing six foot four, slightly shorter than the keeper at six foot six. He speaks. I suspect this because of the other orc keeper. I'm seeing, I'm seeking the nymph named Eros, the ogre named Akrova, and Kuro, the supposed liar. I was told there was a nymph here. I have seen the nymph, and I do know of Kuro. Hmm. And I suspect you will allow us conversating. Yes. You, uh, as you know, one of us, all of ours, have fallen as well. Hmm. He nods and then he looks up. Looks straight at arrows. And he like shoulder rolls his shoulders back. And then revealing like the grin of the Mihanki. His long fa fangs, he lifts his eyebrows slightly, moving a bit around, showing that you are on his turf. He is like completely different than he was before, walking all like a human would, or perhaps any other fae. But now you can see him like moving his legs a little bit apart and smiling at you a bit as he slowly trails over the bowstring. Uh, I make eye contact firmly and hardly with him, but I also try to impose myself sexually, like, in a way a Mihangi wouldn't, uh, to say, look at how fucking beautiful I am, look at you, I am so vastly above and beyond you, stare at me and wonder. You know, I, I, I super hot check him. I get visibly sort of nervous you know, around, you know, if he's approached, the, you know, I, I sort of get up a bit, and I, I sort of move a little bit away from Arkova a bit, and I just fidget a little bit. Uh, Arkova will, when he sees this figure approaching, he, and he sees what he is, um, he sees him grinning with those teeth, he immediately kind of averts gaze and goes right to the fire, and his playing becomes, it becomes softer, but it becomes a lot more persistent. Uh, and he seems to be, I, I guess from a certain perspective, um, you know, very focused on not paying attention to anything of what's going on and just focusing purely on on the music. But there is a bit of a, a little bit of a rocking back and forth going on and a, a little bit of a nervous tension around the temples as his, as his fur, as his, 
brow furrows and a little, little bit of veins showing. I um, I stand and I, I I play the gracious host and I reach up oh, to put my arm over uh, Hans Ah, oh, here, but behold now this. Oh, is he, Hans he, he, when, you, when you do that, you could just his arm just snaps up and just grab your arm as you're doing uh, it and it's like uh, like puts puts it down again and still not diverting his gaze from arrows and just just holding your arm down and he looks at he looks at you. I I return his gaze in full, running my tongue ever so slightly against my fangs, open my mouth just a little bit wider. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this this is Hounds of Kiyun, captain of the Force Watch. You have no doubt heard praise of the locals for him, and also for my my recent uh, stage play about the the huntsman. And the White Lady of the Wood. Yes, I, I'm quite sure you've you've heard such things about him. Well, behold and gaze upon him now in the flesh. And this, uh, and, and I point to the to the orc. And, and here's an orc. The keeper just looks looks at you, like just all like super like just calm, and she looks at you, and you you have seen her before, and she just looks at you and just like a little bit of sh- a little shake. And then she like gets again, and you can see him like she's still like holding her hand, but looking at arrows. Mm. His mouth is like is slowly closing, showing less and less aggressive, but still like imposing. Like this is this is mine. Maybe a bit of like you can stay here. Maybe like you get that from his like body language, but she he's still like on that maybe. I see it's looking holding. Kuro. I do not back down. I stand my ground and I continue to emit my unbelievable awe towards him. You are no nymph, I see. And then he like pushes Kuro towards the rest of you a bit and I'll lets go of your hand. In a jiran. Oh, 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 oh yeah, he's speaking in a jiran, by the way. Yeah, I speak back in a jiran who never told you that I was. That does not concern you. Does not concern me. That which is spoken of Eros Adonis does not concern he. No, I think you are mistaken. I thought the word spoken about you. Oh, with you. And he looks at Kuro. Down at Kuro. And <laughs> I think all of you have to follow me to the tower. I have a conversation I want to delight your ears with. He's still like looking at your arrows and it's like mm-hmm. has his like hand just slowly like trickling down his like his bowstring. You believe that we are to simply be ordered about by the light. I'm speaking in a gerund mm. by the light of you. <sighs> he steps closer to you a bit, past Kuro, showing his full fangs again. You want to stay here? You want to live here? And you that you said there was a smell of love. If you could smell an outcast, you said that, right, Andrew? Should have asked yeah, about that. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely smell that in uh, in his. Uh, I smile at him. Do not take your shame out upon me. I am not to judge you. I do not care. I am merely to be adored. Look upon me. I am not the implement of your terror. I am the fascination of your mind. That I move towards him in a way that could only... It seems predatory, but perhaps erotic, too. 
which which doesn't really translate Mihan Gish unless I'm planning to eat him, but there's definitely something that, that seems other in there. He furs his brows, you get closer, and then he like you're you're a bit taller than him and he like like stands up a bit but he's slightly broader than you are. He just looks at you. He's not moving, but he looks at you, trying to, to read you. Calm yourself down, last one. I don't wish to take whatever it is you have here. I am not a bowman. I am a wonder. Breathe in deeply, and I just, my hand moves slowly through my, my pouches, just uncorking like a large number of different scents. Breathe with your nose and worship what I shall bring affection. Ah. <laughs> I am a treasure that you should find worth guarding. A rose that blooms in a gnarled garden. Not something to destroy. Cherish me. And I actually reach up and just hit, touch his nose like that, but but not like hitting it like in like a seductive way, just like right against the nose. He, he like he like, like moves away slightly, like, just and like nearly like, 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 taking a step back, but not taking a step back, just nearly just catching himself in his balance. But he just lo looks at you with like with big with, with big eyes and I, I delight in it. What? what? Inhale. Why? Bring it into you. Know the essence that is arrows. Daughters, I am the greatest thing that you will ever see, that this community will ever find be welcoming in this dirt so that I might grow tall and strong in the shining sun and velvety darkness. Do not wish to eat you or your companion. And I choose my words in a jeer and to be very poetic and uh, careful. To be very sort of erotic and stimulating. And I really am trying to confuse the fuck out of him. Yeah, he is. You can just see he's just looking up at you and he, it's not, he has like, let, he's still holding his, his, his bow, but he's far, far too close to do anything with it and he's just lo looking up at you. Yeah, and I'm very close uh, to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, just needing these, this uh, androgyny that is so lost and far into a mihangi. It seems so perfectly part of my disposition. I look down at You... You are... different. Hmm. And he like, looks at you again and then he... He's not, he don't want to step back, but you can see a bit that he wants to step back. It's like he feels uncomfortable being being close to you, but it's not because of of like he, he don't don't feel that he could eat you or kill you, but it's more like he's that all that smell, all that like yeah, I don't know how to uh, can you can you get yeah. what I'm saying? Well, I know, yeah, you're, you're telling me exactly what I was attempting to to, to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him yeah conf so confused that he doesn't have any concept of what to do. And so I think you have mind. You. I. Are you cast out as well? Of course not. As he's like backed away, I start moving. No, no, no he's, he's not backed away, but he, he's like he had like that one when he moved, but he didn't move his feet. His feet hasn't moved, and he. So I sort of move my, I move my head. He like he's gone this way, so I slowly, just, just very much glided. Of course not. I am different, shall we say? I you have called to create a business, an empire. I have come. To create pleasure. <laughs> Something that you've never seen before. Something that is far more than a simple store. But I shall exist and bloom 
and be adored. That is what I am here for, not to, as you so pedestrianly put it, live. So, you say you're not an outcast, but you call, and he, he looks at the others, like a bit of like disgust in his face, but it's so subtle that only a me, another Mianki would see it. Yeah. These. And he looks back at you. Your accent is different. Yes, well, I should suppose so. Hmm. Well, I'm not from the same place you are. I'm from a whole different place. I still have to look up leads, especially with you here. Leads? What do you mean leads? We had a fox hunt. Did it go wrong? I don't know what that is. I have questions about a Kuro. Talking about how well Sadus tasted. And he looks at Kuro from a reliable source that have given me information many times. What, you think that Quiro could kill someone? <laughs> that is entertaining. E even though this oh. is in a jeer and I'm like smiling here in my name, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he looks at, looks at, looks at Kuro. Well, no. But then I saw you and yeah. that. And he points to a Krover. With his yeah. like slight head. I am perfectly capable of killing anyone that I wish, any time that I wish, but I am not a murderer. I am a maker of finery, an embellisher of the soul, a caller to reason and passion and art and beauty, a singer of ancient songs. Yes, I. I this is do not have time for your your questions and such. Perhaps we will speak the tongue that is dark and red of nightmares upon some red night. Perhaps we will speak again, but I am not to be interrogated best if I am common trash. You do what you need to do, but I have need of my servant for the moment. We must put business here. After all, don't you wish your land to gain another great jewel to which people will travel leagues to find and watch? And I make sure my mouth moves in a way that's specifically not to his Ajiran senses. I, I, I want to make myself so odd to him that he's like... Uh, uh, like kind of creeped out and, and confused, but maybe also alert at the same time. It's not my land to feel with jewels. He just look, looking at Kuro still. But the satyrs are bent and ready to throw themselves at anyone responsible. I cannot let this lead go. Cold. I can't help but investigate. But taking you into the consideration makes me question. You want to build a business here. You want the king to say good for another creatures of nightmare. Mm. 
Do no. you follow? Mm -hmm. I have to ask you this. Do you follow Jira? What time of day is it? Oh, it's 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 night. It's night time. Do you follow our Maker? I am not a worshipper of the Jira. I would certainly not be walking about the streets in the middle of the day, should I be. Do I look like I crawled out of pine trees? Do I look like anything you've ever seen before? In fact, so stunning am I that they besmirched me to call me a nymph. Have you seen a nymph as gorgeous as this? He, you, can, you can see from his body language that it's like a, a yes, but he just looks down. I, I should also point out that my, from my Mihungi standards, my skin is like... Yeah, I, darker, I, I know. I, have like, I almost have like a deep tan, like a deep, mm. deep tan by Mihungi standards. Like It has a, sort of an orangey pallor. I mean, it is pale, but it's, it's nowhere nearly as pale as his. Mm. Yeah, he's very pale. He's like, yeah. Well, yeah, sure. get, basically, but yeah. he's just looking at you. It's sure an interesting scenario. Knock. Wrong. If she like chooses the the, it's not. It's like really like there's a fine line between the profane or profane word for wrong. He's losing like that, like that, slightly hinting at profane. But yeah, just uh, Mihagi and a fox fay. Is he saying that and in I'd a say, Yeah, yeah, he's saying that in a Jiren. I, I say I do not know. I do not I barely know the walk. He has uh, provided some surgery in his barbering upon me. Uh, we were attacked by and attempted to enslave with hard iron. I tried to like now all of a sudden like just throw a whole other curve. I don't think I ever got the name Vigish, did I? What? Mm. Did I ever Vigish? I think so. Okay. They were if, called uh... Vigish, I believe. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, that, that's right. They, they were called Hobbs Goblins, I believe. They attempted to enslave myself and the retinue of ogres that attend my desires. We were uh, freed after we m did battle with them. It was unfortunate. I still have a bit of a scar here, as you will see. They put the bad thing on me. And I show him uh, the... the, the <laughs> you can see him, like, his eyes, like, just widens a bit, like... <laughs> and he, he like, nods. But... Yes. No. I have heard this. I think this must be a crowbar. And he points to a crowbar. Uh, that is correct, yes. One of my... Pack is has spoken to him. I have heard there was only one other Mihangi here, and that being you. You have a pack. Yeah, but he he's uh, like using the word for for pack for it. Yeah, he's not like, really fucking with him. I'm fucking with like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But he like looks at you. I called him my pack, as you call those your pack, and he like. Points to the two of them. That is that is ridiculous. Please do not besmirch me in such a fashion. I say, I just gonna wave my hand like, how dare you? He is. There's again. He's like you can see like his his hand is moving up and down. His like bowstring, but he's too close to do anything with it. But he just looks at looking at you. But it's an interesting scenario anyway. 
I've heard that you just arrived. Oh, it was very horrifying, I assure you. It was not very interesting. Yes, and we met uh, the other two upon that trail, and they escorted us here. I don't know about foxes um, and such. I do not wish to be bothered. I, I need a good amount of rest and investment into my uh, businesses. And, of course, if, if you were one to perhaps have uh, items to invest, then that would be an entirely other conversation you could have with Quir Quirrell here. He is... Uh, not your pack, huh? And he looks at looks at Kuro. Mm. But. This one I like quite a bit, I will say. He is interesting. The fox. He just looks at you for a while, just squinting his eyes a bit. And I, I like I just like do like a model like deal on him like of course you would look at me like how fucking amazing I am. Like, I, I, I definitely take it and change it up from anything that would be intimidating to, like, yeah, you want to fuck me, don't you? Yeah, I know you do. Yeah, look at you. You want to fuck this. Like, to really try to make him very uncomfortable and confused. He is uncomfortable. You can definitely see that from his stance. But That is exactly right. Hey, the confused part is actually going down. But... Well, you... I could. And he's like looking, looking at you, looking at the others. I'm, I'm just casually sitting there. Like I don't, I don't give my contact. Those two are speaking. No, he's like he has pointed to you like a couple of times in this conversation, like nodding at all three of you. Very subtle, but still visible. Mm -hmm. Arkova makes no attempt to look up or even acknowledge at this point. And his leg has actually started to kind of thump up and down a little bit while he plays. But still, I do have a problems with butchers in my forest. I... He looks at you, Eros. Mm. If you... I do I... I, like, cut him off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, so he's like, starts talking. I take my finger and put it to his lips. I go... I, have to <laughs> I do have to eat. And then he pulls away. I, like, just trace my finger down the name of his neck to his chest. <laughs> And I said, it's all it's all covered in like uh, in in Lilla, but he seems very uncomfortable. And you can see him just you know when you're moving too much back and just and you can your muscles begin like, like shaking a bit because you're like arching so much back. And he like yeah, yeah. gets forward again, but he still don't want to move his feet, and he just gets back just close to your face. And I do have to eat, but I assure you, I will not uh, interrupt your activities too much. I'm sure it will be lovely. You will not eat others here. Aren't there animals in your forest? Yes. We have animals yeah. in the forest. Don't worry about your poaching. My good kinsman. But I would invest in your empire. He said, like, empire, but, but he uses, like, uh, oh, you wouldn't know. He uses, like, the, the Pelicanese word for empire. He just puts it in there. I look at him like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. He, like, smiles at that a bit. And, mm. It's, but I could invest. If you could help me, if you are truly Mihanki, and he looks at you again like confused, and 
<laughs> and then it's like a little just long pause when he's just looking at you. Either <laughs> I am or I am not. But what does the feeling that swell inside you? What does it say? What does it say? He looks away for a while, just looking away. You could just see him, so you can see like a vein just pop up on his forehead, and he's just, just grinding his teeth together. But yeah, trying hard not to be sure. That's right, just, just to punk him all over. There's no need to fear me. I am not here to be your enemy. I'm not here to eat you. I'm very kind. I would lie. I would see it easier. I would imagine to mm, make the king consider your staying here if you could help me in the watch he likes. Someone like us, where he can see them. The watch? What, what do you mean? The forest watch. I don't know what that means. You want me to look at the forest? No. <clears throat> I want you to find the ones who are eating satyrs in my forest. I'm sure that if I relay this to the king, he would consider you staying here. As well, it's I, not my decision. I'm no experienced satyr, eater, finder. But uh, if I notice anything, so it's you all. cannot hunt. And he looks at you like mocking oh, you a oh. bit. Oh, I assure you, I can. But to find ones who have eaten zetas, well, that is really not the sort of skill that we're taught now, is it? Not that skill. I lean in a little bit closer. He looks at you. Well. But surely we can go hunting sometime. It be my pleasure. A smile. So he smiles at Will, like you can see him, like like a bit like miles off, but at like for court. And then he looks at you again. I still have to say good for your presence in this city. Well, I appreciate the fact that you are willing to do so. And he like lo looks at you and has like a realization like, like how could he how could he not a bit and then he like just realizing that how could he not and it's like this just anger just swells up in him but he doesn't and I just, move I just the biggest <laughs> smile as as I just watch just playing him like a puppet yes well anyway I'm sure your king will have one look at me and well there's only one way that goes. And then he like looks up at you with like a like a wider smile, and then, hmm, one way. And then he like look looks at Kuro again. I do not want rumors to form about your. Did you call him servant? Kuro. Uh, hmm. Yes, he couldn't hurt a fly. I will show you that he is. He is, uh, mm. he is not particularly competent, but he does like to speak mm. with things like Ferrum that, that are well off-putting to me. They, they smell so horrendous. I can't come with that presence, and I think it would make me wretch. I've smelled them before, surely. More flutter into the city. It'd be chain. Well... Then you should be pleased that I am not a st 
stump of iron. I am not a founder of the cold blood that has cursed our souls. Be glad you don't taste it. It is not pleasant. Mm. And Alex is so pleased. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's just looking at you, and you can just see this irritation just over in his features. I, I just have to look very... at the chest master who just put him in the chat. And, and of course, when I and of course when I say like filled with irritation, it's just because it's like Mihankis and it's very subtle. But of course, you can read it because you're on Mihankis, yeah. so it's like yeah. I, 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 it wouldn't be noticeable for many other, other things. But he like looks at you one more time and. And you can see him like turn on his heels and walk, all, walk As away. As he turns on his heels, I say, "You don't have any bright eyes here, do you?" He turns with like with a bigger grin. No, mm -hmm. not any longer. Very nice. And he moves up, and you can see the the keeper has gone like a while ago, but. He just moves off. You can see him. That's the thing of like stomping when he's walking, but that's about it. Okay, well, shut the door, please. I say in uh, Sundarian. Oh, you were sitting. weren't you sitting outside? I think Kyr's hut oh, was too oh, yeah, small. Oh, you just inside his house, and the door. Was no, no, I, I, I thought you like the yeah, door we're, was we're open. Right and, and, and I was just sort of gesturing inside, like, hey, look at that shelf. Yeah. All right. So I wait for uh, just a few moments until he's out of eye shot, and I turn, grab a hold of Quiro, and bring him inside hastily. <laughs> I do not seem pleased. Oh. Well, that... To hear that conversation, certainly it sounded like, like Cinderian tied in dark bows and set upon a gift. A gift that you are not entirely sure you should open. If that no. was a Jiren, I should be well pleased to learn it one day. Yes, it was a Jiren. And you should be very careful because he figured out what you did. <laughs> named you. Fortunately, I have the correct tongue to form the moves of the liar. It would seem, at least for that, mm, block-headed Mihongi. It will be very careful. He is still looking. And he might eat you. This is very painful, I assure you. Be careful what you do. He was very concerned about the satyrs and the fox hunt. I have saved you. Hmm. Remember that. Make sure you remember the grace that exudes from Eros Adonis Quiro. You are in it. Still, for now, make haste to prepare for my arrangements that I might make a proper installment for business here in the mock flame dance. I'm going to look down at you very seriously. Hmm. I see. I'm glad to know that your words are as supple and graceful as your body. You have danced the dance and stepped us out of the fire once more. You've planted the trees of deception and we'll hide ourselves in that forest now, won't we? Still, you are owed a thing. Owed specifically by that lump of iron, that, that misshapen ingot that needs to be battered and molded into something useful, does he not? Let us see if that tight-fingered ferrum will give us what we are owed. Yes, and I do not wish to see it. Ferrums sicken me, the only use for ferrum. And I sort of trail off. Uh, I suppose there isn't one. Just get whatever you can from him, his monetary... Uh, Delights. Don't ever bring the iron near me. Uh, from the thought of touching a ferrum is enough to 
break me out of a rash. I should think so. I should think so. That he would be correct. Hmm. Still, if Hans a Kiyun, that master hunter, if he's poking around in the forest, looking for the truth of the matter, I suppose he'll have to find the cult of Karth Yi. Yes, they're uh, a certain small group around here. Uh, we're we're spe we're back speaking in a uh, Sindarian, and they worship a a being, a deity perhaps called Karth Yi. They will consume the flesh of others, drag them into caves, perform profane rites, dressed in nothing but the furs of beasts that they have slain. This is the sort of activity these Taps will get up to. I know that a clay man, the Red Mountains, the Goat Fae, these are the types that will join in such things. Sometimes a Goat Fae will eat another Goat Fae. It is the most taboo and the most delicious thing that they can ever think of. And we hmm. know how much they enjoy their taboos. Cannibalism is the most repellent thing to my sensibilities. I'm not an ogre. Perhaps uh, Arkova would be more keen to speak kin eating with you. That being said, there are other delights my tongue has known. Strong are my tastes. Hmm. Moons fall <laughs> far in the heavens. Arkova, take, come. With me, I show. House. Place, stay, rest. Oh. And he kind of snaps out of it because cause he. he this entire time, it looks like he's been so focused on the music and stuff that he finally, his head kind of shakes and the thumping of his leg stops and he kind of looks up at you. Oh, well, of course. Uh, kudo. Eros, uh, I will be in house of meditation should you acquire need of me. Oh, I see. We'll, uh, We'll see how long you find the silence of such a place to be to your liking, but if you ever need a room and board, you know, and I, I sort of look down at <laughs> there's almost no space for, for our COVID to even curl up. Uh, you can find it here. You you won't owe me a single thing, no, no. Just I know that your your conscience would, would not let such a, a favor weigh upon you, a favor of a friend. You know, you you wouldn't owe me but a bit. You could, but, you know. He walks up to you and have his hand, his large, broad hand against your shoulder, pats you on to the side. <laughs> I thank you much. Too kind you are to me. Too kind. Um, ah, no, no such thing amongst friends. No such thing as too kind. Um, Arkova. Can I sort of get up and, you know, there are these slight tendrils that are receding into some of my fingers as I pull, up, pull my hands from the ground. Ugh. Come. And I look towards Kuro and, and Eros. And I, and I nod respectfully. I thank you for time here. More future. And then I yes, to... yes. Ah. Uh... Be sure to return it any time you wish. And I turned yeah. to Eros. I think that boy was was growing mold on his hands. Uh, I never understand orcs. Your presence was most appreciated. As have you. We thank you. Come, Alcova. Let me show you 
to a house of contemplation. Of course, lead the way. Slowly begin to hovel off. And Arkova keeps up with you. Quite easily. Yeah. That, it's almost like walking somewhat, with a child. You know, you kind of have to... Yeah, so somewhat frustratingly, he'll he'll almost walk ahead of you, and then he'll have to stop and then kind of wait. So he kind of has this lower-than-usual pace he has to keep, and it's like... Hmm. Take time to feel the dirt on your feet, grass your boots understand that in this land of flame dance your people have found life above what they have been given to others uh, by others many you have mean family and live they have killed one this is all because they understand of the land they stay in. Hmm, kind of just nods his head at that. And then and he points to, then he'll point to like a, a, an ogre with a hibbon on its back and go, is that what you mean there? Yes. Or ogre, eater of men. Normally not. Here, you do. And I gesture to like the him and, you know. and house of contemplation. And I like gesture towards your mandolin. I think you will enjoy its ambiance. Ah. Many. Music is a language that transcends the tongues, yes. I speak that mm. very well. <laughs> yes. Come. And then, and then, like, as we're walking, kind of leans over. They're not going to put Hibben on my back, though, are you? Hmm? And, like, very seriously, just look up at you and I shake my head. Oh, okay, good, good. That would not be a fond experience. Unless Hibben was friend, in which case, they get right back. Mm. Almost like that humor's going over me. I'm, just, I'm not. And you walk outside of the of the old community, that little fence. Walk for a little while inside the city. And you come to a, a place, you have been there before, Akrova, you can recognize the, the bone structure, the bony door where all the, like, essence are, like, spilling out slowly through the cracks in it. There's no light spilling out. There's light out here. Make your step quiet. You approach many rest. I just gesture for you to go on in. And like I wait to see he, if he actually like goes in and stays in, and then I'll just return back to my home. Well, our cover will walk inside, and he'll he'll make sure to step lightly as he does. Though he'll occasionally step on a, a creaky piece of wood or or some. <laughs> And then under the mass of his weight, he goes, mm. you see his face scrunching. And, well, you can roll that perception hearing. Perception hearing. I got a nine. Well, you don't hear it till, like, you get, like, there's, like, a small, cold 
three fingered hand who like touches your shoulder. Just, uh, uh, and then it touches. As, <laughs> as, as soon as I feel that our cobalt just kind of whoo, it turns around immediately as eyes are wide. Do you Ooh. see like a typhon face looking looking up at you? Oh, if it's a typhon, as soon as he sees that, he, he takes the mandolin and like puts it over his face. <laughs> Ugh. And then it slightly peeks his head over it. And then lowers. It's like a small, like, slit eyes is looking at you. Oh, apologies. You snuck up upon me. I was not aware. I was told by friend to walk in quietly. Which, which kind of friend? Oh, work. Outside. He <laughs> like looks just there with the with the door you haven't closed and he just looks at it. You are here to sleep. He looks looks at you like assessing your size, like moving a bit slowly, like swaying. Here to wake everyone up. And he like looks looks at you, his eyes getting bigger. No, no, no. I need place to rest. And he like moves around and he like gestures a bit with his, with his hand and as he follows you up. And you can see slowly there's like pillows and you can see those big balls of essence where there's just you can just see there's something like crumpling, burning, and you can just see just fresh flowers on it. Still like slowly burning, and you can see like a lot of pillows, all filled with different sorts of people, mostly cedar. A could sit too are there. And then you see another could sit, and there's quite a lot of them in here. Oh, his eyes narrow as he sees all these Duke sets, and his mind reels back. And all of a sudden, there's a there's a bit of a conflict going on in his mind. He thinks about the violent things that these Duke set might try upon him, and in turn, he thinks about the violent things he will do to them in kind. Uh, and this sort of like balances around back and forth in his mind as he walks along. Um, so he tries to like keep his mind off of those thoughts as much as he can. He, he, uh, snake, you would know that he, he or she. You cannot see its coloration. You presume it's black and red. It's fairly small. And he just looks at you, just up at you again, and then like, like holds his little claw out to a, uh, to a bed. And, like, oh, uh, he turns to him and he holds out to uh, gets out his coins and uh how much and he like his eyes widen he's never seen this before <laughs> almost in disbelief he kind of puts the coins back and just silently nods and just walks inside <sighs> and then you like did like creak or something? Do you, do you know Thuban? Let me look real quick. I, 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 you have so many languages, so over here you can hear his. Uh, no, no, he does not know Thuban. For hell, Vera! As he looks, as you like creaks or something, and he like, and you just hear him like sliding out. He tries to walk. Tries to walk more quietly, but he'll he'll find a spot and just kind of rest his his large self down. Uh, but it'll be a very long time before he actually falls to slumber, and in fact, uh, much of it will be spent with him rocking back and forth in the darkness, maybe with a shadow of flames dancing upon. Ever so lightly um, silhouetting him, but uh, his mind begins to reel with the thoughts of uh, those Duke sets 
and uh, all of a sudden new scenarios begin getting created in his mind over these individuals. What sort of ne'er-do-well things might they get up into? Will they creep into this room while he sleeps and try to come upon him like they did his father while he was playing? What will he have to do? And then he thinks of all those violent things. And uh, hours will go into the night as he thinks about these things, and eventually... You can just you can just see them, like, sitting in Lotus position. You can see their big eyes. You can just see their eyes just moving erratically, just on the inside of that, showing that small bulge, as if they are in deep slumber, but better than... Better than hmm. Yeah, as, much as closer it, than yours. As this happens... Uh, this will go on for hours on end until he's become so mentally fatigued from it that he eventually falls to slumber. But there's an intensity that he feels within. And we will skip to morning. We get to Abitax's room and slight footsteps outside. You hear your, the familiar voice of Lara. Oh, I will. It's. Oh. Two seconds. I only know which guard it shouldn't be. It is, um, of course, we start in the morning of the day of the Phoenix in the day of rebirth. So, you know, sorry about that. I'm in cycle 5001. Five, so, everyone's on the same page. But we start there and uh, you wake up as Laros enters your room. Master. I regard him and I, I go down to my, you know, to my knees and like in a respectful sort of manner. He nods his head at you. We will gather the community. Obeknev is being burned today. Do well, you need for me to bring anything? Any tools, any notes, ledgers uh, of your personal stock? No. We did the sending as we do with all Negali before. They... My sister wants to burn him like the old ways. What of the skull? Bones? He looks at you. Have been. Extracted some of them, took the skull. Hmm. I intend on burning the rest. God. She is with you. I get no. back up. He wanted to be sinned. Hmm. And not as I sort of get back up. You can see like sadness just over his features as he looks. He's not looking at you. He's looking at your tool things and that uh, boiling flask he gave you. I have almost like these weird alien-looking tools that I've been working on. You know, they are just sound like this. It's almost like a weird um, uh, you know, stark contrast. You know, it's on a stone slab, like a simple just cut stone slab with all like these vines and dirt and everywhere. And there's like a clean spot, and there's like these weird-looking, very intricate, almost alien-looking tools that 
perhaps to him that might seem like useless. <laughs> but you know, I, I get up and I, I start getting dressed. And I, and I follow him to the burial ceremonies. Yeah. And you too, I guess you're not sleeping. Eros and Kuro, as you are, of course, Faye. As you can see, like there's an old orc walking around. I live with him now. You're there. I <laughs> live with him now. I have just decided this. And yeah, he owes me an unmeasurable boon for saying as he was not eaten due to my duplicity and risking of myself. And he owes me immeasurable boons for uh, allowing him to, to reside within my hovel and um, the future procurement of his business. So we, we both are under the uh, the impression that the other uh, owes the other. But there's like a knock on your door, Q. Oh. Well, as, a, as a filthy hovel, I guess we both hear it. Stand up. Mm. Yeah. I will smell to see what's on the other side of the door. It smells very like soil like, very like very clean, very Orcish. nearly no yeah, nearly no scent to it. It's just the yeah. But is it our orc or a different orc? No, I mean, it's your not your not your orc smells. There's a faint, there's a faint different. scent of like almost decay to it, you know, like a like bodies. You know. I have a rotten orc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the grave. Uh... Yeah. I put my hand on your shoulder, knowing that orcs can be dangerous, as they know uh, witchomancing. And I will say, um, Quiro, I whisper into your ear. There is an orc outside the door. Remember, they can be dangerous. It is not the orc we are used to, it is a second orc. Ah, I see. Yes, there's, there's always an orc creeping about out there. And I'll Kuro? bet you... Kuro? Yep. And I can knock again. Now, now, now listen to this. We're going to open this door, and this orc is going to want something. Huh? Yeah. You see, like, a uh, oh, um, uh, younger male or standing out there. Uh, so he and he looks sad for a moment and then he like looks up at you. There's burial. Oh yes. Yes my my fallen comrade, the cat man, struck down in his prime. I see Eros this one this one is for me. I have a ceremony to go to, the burial of my fallen compatriot. You could come if you wish, though it is it is not your it's not your burden to bear. Otherwise you can make yourself at home. Tidy you see up. It, the the orcus is beginning to lumber off as you're speaking. Oh, like, there it goes. I just look at the orcus. <laughs> Please move he moves very very slowly, just uh I, I shake my head like, like you know, like I don't know what to put it for correct term is, but like he is specially abled, like Jesus fucking Christ. And I look at you, I go, yes, I, I would care to see your burial rites. Did you say? I'm not exactly sure what that means. I have a faint idea of. Mm. My, yes, I'm not my entirely sure what. There's hmm. something else. Uh, yeah. Yes, I'm not sure what this one will entail either. He was not an orc, but well, we shall see now. Now we'll put on our best, and I, I put on that that seemingly single robe that I have. Now, now, be be sure to lock the door. We don't want any of these these sticky fingered orcs coming in here and making off with with what we have earned. You see. I look kind of confused. I kind of look at the door, kind of like, um, these words, door, and I'm like, I don't, I don't understand what, what, what you're talking about. Yes, we just, uh, 
and you know I I close the door and there's this you know sort of rusted lock that is that was stolen from from someone else's home. I, I close this here, and uh, that should keep anyone from from coming inside. And I, I give the door a shake, and it, it, no oh. one would pick the lock. They could just yank the door off. But, but you know, <laughs> I, I kind of tap the lock and well, uh, I did not know what this was. There was one in the the room where there were many, many people. I, I forget the name of the place. But there was one there on the door. I had never seen something like that before. It's not uh, it's not customary to me. So uh, it is like a chain in the house, then. Yeah, see, I said, uh, well, this one here is made of iron, so I, I, I don't expect you to have have any interest, but if oh, you no, see I other... Oh, touch it. Mm -hmm. I just kind of look at it, and I look disgusted. Why do you keep this so close to you? It's just nauseating. Well, I was unable to find a, a, a copper variant. They say that those are weaker, but we all know that that is, that is a lie propagated by the ferrum who seem to have a corner on the market for locks. But if I just keep this closed and I keep this key here to unlock it, keeps the door shut, keeps anyone from, from creeping inside and making off with my riches. I see. It is most um, disgraceful that you would have such a thing. Well, I, I live in a in a poor neighborhood as it is now, and I and I look around and there's like mm, orcs and other things like that. And the Gali, there's actually quite a few the Gali, all living simply. But, so, you know. is it one of these things? And I just just directly just point at the Gali. Yes, that is the. The people that Amosi once hailed from, and you know, we're we're walking a, a, along and following following the orc. Yes, he was a. Uh, he also trained with my my master Sue. He was a. Uh, he was skilled in his art, but it did not protect him, and this concerns me greatly. There is indeed someone out there, striking folks down in the forest. I do not like it. As I have said before, there's a the cult of Carthage. Sometimes a, a singular deranged man of, or, or another will go out and live in the woods and hunt people for sport. And then I look up to my <laughs> Mihan Gi compatriot like, mm, well, I mean, he knows. He knows. Yes. I do not know about this Carthage, though. It's a name I am not familiar. I don't know. Uh, it might be a spirit. Maybe a man, a thing of flesh, but there are those that worship him, live in a cave. I've heard many a tale. All of them have a grim, bloody ending. I like blood. It is honest. Hmm. But these, they don't respect the honesty of blood. No, blood to them is is a vessel. It is something for their own depredations. They take it, take advantage of it, make it theirs, take it from others, bask in it, bathe in it. It's not the honesty of a wild hunt. It's something else. Something profane. Well, uh, that which is profane is often difficult to determine and what exactly they are profaning. Still, uh, I kind of look around like, oh, maybe someone hear this. We certainly can't indulge such uh, creatures to make such an effort. Perhaps they are behind this uh, fox hunt. Yes, could be anything. Could be a, a monster that we do not even know. Something left over from the last long night. Those three days when things will creep out of the woods, make their first steps into this world. This are you, year, are something you you'll need to learn. The long night to me, really. The long night here, it's, it's different. 
there are things out there that not even you would, would wish to see in that utter blackness. But such is the price that we pay for living in this rural magnificence. And I, I do, you know, I look around at the, the trees and the huts and smoke coming from the chimneys. and hmm, I do genuinely feel at home here. If we go to another place filled with smoke, as you wake up from your night's sleep, you are, of course, exhausted, but people are making noise. You see two satyrs wrestling a bit over, well, nothing. You can see, like, a, a glass pipe broken beside them, but it's only a good guess for you, Akroa. <laughs> well. Hmm. And you can see, like, just no, they could sit in here anymore. You can see that Typhon just looking in at the two of them, and then looks at you. I go as you wake up from their noise. As I uh, stir from my slumber, I uh, I look around. My his head is slightly groggy. And he sees the two satyrs fighting. He pays them no mind. It is the will of such creatures to do such things as he is most accustomed to. And uh, He'll get up slowly, lumbering upwards. Uh, as he does, he'll look towards the Typhon, hitting straight towards him, and uh, uh, give him a nod. I was uh, wondering, would you yes. be in uh, service of... Hmm, of my skills, and I pull forth yes. my mandolin, swinging it around, and I do a little jingle, ding, 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 right in front of him. Yeah, yes. You can see him, he's very distracted about the, like, the satyrs fighting, just looking at them, and then looking at you. Yes. Say, seeing as how yeah. that's a... <laughs> seeing, how, seeing how that's actually a, a more greater concern, he'll, he'll actually back up and he'll hold his fingers up Hold on. And he'll walk towards where the satyrs are, and he'll grab each of them by the back of their heads, and he'll pull, the, he'll actually he'll grab them by the, their horns and pull them aside. And he'll look <laughs> at them. You can just What's see your... them just like, their first leg, and then they don't realize they never, and then they're just like, and then they get all stiff, and then they look just up at you. And what you you're fighting about? Really, like, really red eyes, and the other one's just, yeah, just filthy looking, but. What are you fighting about? <laughs> and he like points to the like broken glass pipe and just looks and points at the field. yeah, just one with the red eyes. And just looks looking up at you. Like brown messy hair all over the place. Ah. I see. Up at you. I see. Well, in that case, you take that outside. <laughs> she like there's like a one of them stretches their legs, trying to like hit the ground. He'll he'll let them go, and he'll be like, "Go on." You can see like the the red eyes like pushes the other one, so he like falls under, falls down, and and he looks and looks at you, and then he like scuttles out. As soon as he He's does that, I, 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 I like give the impression I'm gonna chase him, and I just, I kind of lean forward a little I, bit, and like he moves, he moves clo fast on his little hoof, hoofed legs. Like the typhoon just slides, slides to the side as this one just rolls out, and he like. Then he'll take his hands, walking up to the typhoon, doing this, and afterwards uh, he'll swing the mandolin back around. As you can see, I have many skills that I can employ. <laughs> and then strum, strums the instrument once more. You can see him like he looks like impressed and 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 ecstatic. But then again, you know the siphon, and he like puts like his little chief figure hand on you and. Uh, and he he looks at you for a while. Like, what which, which language were you speaking to him? Uh, that was in Sindarian. I was in yeah, Sindarian. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he 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 goes and turns in Sindarian. You, yeah. I I see you are 
useful. What's your name? Arkova is my name. Uh, and uh, what's of yours? <laughs> Goosh. He looks up at you. You can see like he's written, uh, written black, mostly mostly dark red, but only like black on his like his head and down. I see your usefulness, Akrova. What does your name mean? Mountain's voice is what it means. <laughs> he like I you you will stay here in the house of Opiate. Contemplation <laughs> Just looking up at you. Ah, yes. Yes, indeed. My orc friend suggested this place to me, said that uh, I would find it to my liking. And he, like, moves off to the, to the like, the, the big pile of, like, things just burning, and he, like, puts up some, some herbs and, yes, orcs. This is House of Opiates, huh? Looks back at you. Yes. I see many who uh, give their praise to opiates. I have uh, never done such as uh, myself. Quite ignorant of his ways, I am. Its ways. Krova. Ah, its ways. Its, mm, yes. And you, you get pre you give high price every every night. Eight hours. He <laughs> looks at you like questioning. Mm. He just nods his head at that. Measurements correct. He smiles up at you. Mm. Price every night. What sort of uh, rituals goes in the uh, praising? What things do I have to do? Sleep. Sleep. A crowbar. Entire world. It's world. When he says that, he kind of has this bewildered look on his face. So... I need not have to say any special words, perform any rites, I just go to slumber? He. There are, of course, things you can do to please it. But you, you can do what you wish. You know, my friends, I am beginning to like opiate a lot. Opiate does not ask too much. I like this. Mm. Yeah, he, he just smiles at you, just broad, just typhoon, smiles at you. Yes. Does not ask. Maybe essence to the hearth. He like gestures. But. Hope it's generous. He <laughs> like looks up at the smoke forming like weird clouds. Mm. <laughs> Smiles up at you. And then he like slid us off again. He'll uh he'll find a little spot uh in in the in the place where 
There's a good number of people. A play of sort that will retrieve uh, a, lot of, a lot of traffic. And he'll begin to play. He'll make the tune appropriate. If it's very quiet in there, he'll make sure the tune is more ambient than demanding. Uh, that's how he'll start out his play. You can see, like, some satyrs, like, looking at you when you begin playing. And, and like, an ogre, look at, look at you, and then... They like scoot a little bit closer, a little bit closer, and then they sit like close to you, and, like taking taking their pillows with them and like sit and then <sighs> closing their eyes slowly, tracing opiate, all calm. Yeah, you can see there's like a lot of you could sit in there. Just more, they're not sitting with you, they're just walking walking past you, they have like a snicker on their face as they look at the others. Like, one, there's one ogre who's like, like leaning forward and then walking up and then leaning forward and then waking up again. And you can just see them, they're looking. And then, he, then they look at you and there's that albino who looks at you. Like, and And then it moves closer into, there's like a lot of different chambers. There's this big chamber with the hearth in it, where the smoke is just filling the room, but looks at you strangely and, and moves away. Keep my eyes on that one especially. Uh, making sure, you know, using his guile to make sure that he is not being watched in return, but... Uh, all of a sudden the old thoughts start emerging once more, like the tide coming back again. He begins thinking of those violent things that these creatures might try to put upon him. And uh, like that roller coaster ride, it starts over again. He'll start having uh, highs and lows with these thoughts. And occasionally when, when the thoughts get violent enough, he'll feel that anger boiling within. And all of a sudden while he's playing, there'll be a loud, sharp ping with his, uh, with his music. But then catching himself, he'll go right back to it again. Um, yeah, but we go back to the burial side after a little mandolin playing. <laughs> but yeah, and you all there's like a big open open space. A lot of people, mostly like the community has has gathered. There's mostly elderly and young, as the feed needs attention, like a babe do, as the old saying of Minster goes. But uh, most are respectful and quiet. Many are out from the temple. You can see several keepers. Everyone besides the matriarch is out here. But, yeah, no one. It's really high enough for the matriarch. But you see, there's like uh, this thick stone in the like in the back and on it is is carved all these eye shaped there's eleven of them that look distinct distinctly like the same kind of eyes and eleven new one and eleven new one and eleven new one all looking down at the place and there's a little like an altar built with Wood twigs, and you can see just there linen clad. Well, a linen clad body laying there. And Sue, you can see him, he lifts off the ground in one swift motion. Behind him is a statue, the wooden altar, and then in front of him is all of you. Lasso is standing by the altar with a torch in his hand. And Sue speaks up. One of our brothers has left for reincarnation. His soul has been sent on the nightfall by the Baikon day. Upagnef Amose will be remembered as the one who tried to 
community is together in this town of peace. He saw people not for what they were, but what they could become. Achieving with the active word of Nithraxu, have some followed him to the temple. There's like some satyrs were like stomping their little feet. Hoofs. He was a true follower, believer. I, and which we all know now, true magi, oracle. Nokos, he says, like with a deeper voice than he should have. Still quite loud. Take, uh, take his child. Follow us to the right path and take him to the true believer so may he again may rise amongst the esoteric paths as by the request we will send his body to she she who created the shyans a god not like others seeing the right enemy though not like the others. He like, he's, he's like looking, trying to find the white work as he's looking at all the Gali, looking out at him. And La, uh, Laros torches the, the, his torch into the like straw filled altar and it begins like burning. We must be strong in this cycle for something or someone is out there. Not the chargoning infidels. It's again everyone who live here in Flamelands. And we must show that we can carry our foreheads high and proud. By the will of the Fraxu, hail the 44. And it's like a hail the 44. Just hail the. Yeah. And you see people just. I do not close. know what <clears throat> Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm standing. I'm, I keep silent, but I just nod at that. Just... You can see small kids like pulling their arms up, like they're two long orc orc arms. Hell, and then there's like, uh, like two way circle going around, going closer to the flame, and people are standing up there quiet for a while, and then they move away, and then they move to other places, and it's just burning. Alaros is standing there. And Sue is like flying down in front of him. And they're speaking quietly. You can see another cloaked figure standing between, uh, yeah, besides Laros, long tusks out of the hood. Uh, you said the matriarch was here, right? Or a matriarch? Yeah. Do I know this yeah. one? Yeah. Is this you know this. Is yeah. this Tatsi Chai? Okay. Yeah. Mm. Is she with you? Can see, you can see. She's yeah. She's she's standing there, waiting for people to move. And she has. You can you can you can not. She's you cannot see her her face or anything. You just you've seen her tusks. Mm -hmm. They are like calves in different like patterns. The so the fracture and patterns. Mathematical symbols. I don't uh, approach the the funeral pyre. Uh, you know, in like the ambient sort of people waiting around. I, you know, I, perhaps others get a bit closer or whatnot. I'm, you know, I'm like within the crowd, just sort of a bit further away, you know, I'm just blending in a bit or amongst the other orcs. But, uh, you know, I, I keep looking over uh, towards the matriarch and um, thinking, thinking of <laughs> that, 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 I, that I'm not liking what I'm seeing. Yeah, like I'm, I'm looking like you know, I'm assuming she's like almost in an act of mourning, or at least what I'm thinking. No, you can you not see her. She's she's speaking to Sue and uh, oh, okay. Lara right now. She's okay. not in in, in in mourning. She's uh, but she's there. So. Okay. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't go to the pyre. I don't like say any do anything else. Uh, like I'm, I assume the majority of people. But I I do make my way over to. Uh, to see, you know, to Sue and, and to Che and 
to Master Amus. I make my way over, over to them, and uh, I don't like walk into their sort of conversation. You know, I, I wait a bit. I wait for them, mainly the matriarch, to, to notice that I'm like in line to to speak. If there are like uh, or other people that want to speak to them. Or no, no one else is getting up to them, and you can see like Laro looking back over his shoulder, looking at you. You're a bit away. I, I just make my way on over. And uh, as I'm making my way over, you know, like I'm looking, you know, through the fire and the pirate and, and, and all the, the ambient people here. And then I see Eros. And I, I'm like, I look at him and I, I look at the others in the crowd. But uh, that, that's really it. My little beady eyes just sort of scanning a bit. And uh, but, uh, I make my way to them. I just sort of wait for them to acknowledge me. Mm. Happy for a few moments. Lara, Lara says as he like, looks at you. Yes, master. He looks stand. at you, like waiting, waiting for you. You know, and I, and I, when he, you know. Addresses me. You can see the three of you looking at you. Just and I step to forward. Admit air, but and then you know, I I go down to my knees and I I don't look at Sue. I don't look at uh, Master Amos. But I look at the matriarch. Um, and I look up at her and I and I and I say, "This is not the normal ritual." I hope. That those who father and mother us all do not look upon this as blasphemy. I look at her, almost trying to get a read on her. Her response. See, see, you can nearly not see her face. It's just covered in this thing. You can just see if there's not any reaction in what you see. And Laros begins speaking. I did this in for the family's sake. I did all the funeral rites this night. Mm. Spoke to him, asked him what he wanted. Spoke to his family what they wanted. And I made the proper he seems like a bit like irritated about you and just looking at the matriarch and then looking to you. I make it proper. Up. And he's like looking at you just you can see just big chunks of fur just beginning like to stick up on his shoulders. And of course, in your wisdom surely. But I not speak of yours or any of ours, but those greater and I gesture to the shrine, that great stone. Those that watch over us, even now. I am just cautious. Words are perhaps too wary on your ears. Forgive me if I have created uncertainty. I did not wish for that to occur. I thank you for allowing me to approach. May the trolls look down upon all of you with kindness. Right now, when I start back. And then the chi begins speaking. You don't know that the bag was empty. There's nothing in the linnet, boy. Nothing there. I stop and I look up at her. Forgive me, but your words only bring confusion. What is it you speak of, O Matriarch Most High?
We are just burning a fire. Architects. And Laura's just just looking at her like <laughs> looking, looking. And Sue's begin like looking around. Someone hurt them. They nod. I say the, for your words you've given to me. They still in my mind. And she walks. It nods to Sue, Laru, and then you, and then walks back to her tower. And I turn and I, you know, I never guard and I look at my, my mentor and I say, Master? Master Sue. And then I turn it on. I leave, like, and I don't leave com entirely. I just make my, actually, I make my way back into the crowd and, well, I find Kudo. Arrows here to be. Kind of strange to see arrows here. But I make my way towards you two in the crowd. Very slowly, you probably see me approaching a mile away. Good all. It is good to see that you have made it to the ceremony. Yes, yes, of course. I would not. Uh, shirk my duties when it came to a to a fallen compatriot. Now, you were close to this one. Well, of a sort. I mean, we we both studied under Sue. I did not see him as as much as I saw Sue himself. But still, still we were we were both students of the same art, and that is a rarity. Uh, throughout the entire world and even here where those who understand the esoteric paths uh, are at least somewhat welcome even here it is a rare thing and that deserves respect Eros tell me ceremony different than you or no Oh, yes. Very much. When we die, we are burned to ash and scattered to lonely winds that haunt the desert. Perhaps to come again. Hmm. Then it is close. We burn. No desert. No, it is very different. I assure you, there is no reincarnation. As your claims it was only birth anew. It is different, more different than you might think. This is a smile. Both of you stay, enjoy, give silent goodbye. Yes. And I look yes, at you, I, I give eye contact with both of you. It's the best we can do right now. And I, and I look upon that ash that is fluttering through the winds, and I, I think to Eros's speaking of re rebirth, I think to our uh, belief of reincarnation, I look at that ash. <sighs> Sleep well, Amose. Forget what you've seen in this life. When you wake up again, may you be somewhere else. May you be somewhere else. 
and not be haunted by the ghosts of the past. And a look at that ash dissipating into the sky. But I, I dismiss myself and I let you two you know, stay as, as I sort of, a bit of a social orc. Um, I, do, I go towards, the, like, within the crowd if there are other orcs and whatnot. You know, I'll, I'll speak to them a few words. Of the, along the same lines as I did with Kuro and Arrows. You can see them, like... Except, Absolutely. well, I guess it isn't the same. It's a little different. Yeah. Last one of... Yeah, of them. In... In Temple. Besides the old one. Mm. Not good. Right, I stay here in the ceremony until yeah. its completion. And then, uh, you can see, yeah, like, small memories. You can see a human female. You've seen her before. Brown skin, curly hair. Just looking at the fire. Tears rolling down in her cheeks. And you can see like Sue fluttering, fluttering over to her. Right. Removing the tears from her face. Smiling at her. Like speaking to her lowly as you watch them. And then she walks away slowly. And you can see Sue just look at you again, regard you, and then fly to Kuro. He cannot walk in this crowd. There's too many people walking around. It would be foolish to walk. He walk, yeah, flies to, to Kuro. Greetings there, Master Sue. How fare you on this this dark day? I I I don't fare good, as you can see. And it looks at you. Mm. One of my mm, older students. But I still have you and Igatissus. You. Will you. Will you still make that play for me? Still? Yes, yes, I've, I've been mulling it over in my mind. The. To, to write something for the king is both an honor and intimidating. I have heard many tales about King Deliria and who I will call the Green Lady of the Wood. Yes, I think that'll be a, a suitable title for his, his most beautiful of brides. The one who, ex who uh, such jealousy is put forth upon by his other wives. A tale of love and lust and want. Yes, this is what the audiences love. Though I wonder, would the king find it offensive? Or would he see the truth of the matter and know that his own life is a tale far taller than anyone around him? Passions burn brightly in that one. Mm, it's not that one he will be marrying and Igatissus will mm. be married to him. The other one, I know it's a rumor, but they are married. I've spoken to him. Oh, I see then. But I'll need to find out more about this this new bride. It'll be a uh... It'll be my wedding gift to them to extol their virtues mm. before they exchange vows. She is a new student of mine. 
I think you have met. Mm, we must have, but but only in in passing. Mm. Well, he like looks back at her and then like stops his gaze before he gets to her and like like move, try to find the vision so she can like maybe maybe later. And then he like looks at arrows, like, bends at it. Write that to you. He moves. What did you say? Eighty cents again. I'm just thinking to myself. I it's rare for me to see one of the one of the clay people learning the esoteric paths of the oracle. I suppose their lives are so short. It passed so quickly. You'd think they'd be more interested in learning about the future, seeing where they should place their next foot before it falls. They don't have much past to look back into. They should understand the future. But. Is there anything people want to do, or should I skip ahead? No, that's that's really you know I um I you said there weren't that many orcs in this scene, right? Yeah, yeah, they are the the most people who are most staying. I uh, yeah, yeah, but but they're still oak, oh they're still very very old orcs there, and and young orcs who are like they're like playing with the Nigalis. Tumbling around, having having a good time after they said their prayers and and stood just, quiet by their grandparents or, or parents. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm staying more by them, as if my presence would sort of make them remember something. And I sort of make sh you know I make sure to sure to show myself to them. And I sort of position myself you know by that stone. All those eyes behind me, but uh, I uh, I like watch them, and I watch the, the little orc children with the, the Nagali children. I don't you like see a little orc children seven. like crying out because he's like got scratched by a Nagali, um, and then they like tumble over again, him just using his like ape-like arms to throw the the cat around. Yeah. I just, I just watch till the end of the ceremonies, and that's that's really it, I think. You can see like um, there's one Nagali female who stands, who's like, yeah, has been. She just stops at the pie and has not been moving like the others. She has like a bit extra tough fur around her face, like your master, but it's like. The only thing that makes her stand out from the galley to you. Um, yeah, I don't really pay them that much, that much care or mind. Or this, or really this ceremony, you know. I'm, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just here because I have to. Be. <laughs> Hush. Tell the judge roll. Yeah. Uh, but we skip ahead nine days to the day of to find the right one. 
the day of butterflies and you crew have been working on your little play oh sorry uh, that startled me and <laughs> you have been yeah working on your uh, work I'm sure that uh, you got a crowbar with you but no problem and we will make a montage um, seeing seeing the days arrive you have rehearsals you make you drink do what you do and so on, even that foul grass tea. Sorry, cue. Cool. And what on the night of the wedding, you see, you skip ahead to the uh, to the first hall of Bacchus. You all know it. It's bad. The first hall of Bacchus open up to uh, to like the high middle class, all the clergy, to the elite opening up this grand building which looks like a multi-story well in but when you get in there you're seeing like this large building open up for you I have a picture of what I wanted it to look down if it was run down but I can maybe you could get the gist of it anyway at the bottom of this but no matter you can see it but uh well seemingly meant to start with a uh, like a theater like place and there's like high, highly skilled like craftsmanship on the walls and the ceiling all just these beautiful uh, three, like wooden carvings and the most of the carvings are uh, uh, yeah depicting nude satyrs with uh, most other species of female engaging in style and in full display, but still tasteful, of course, painted with gold and other extravagant colors. Silken banners hang from the from the ceiling, green, yellows, most of the colors who hang here. And in some of these, not in the in the exact middle, but like out to the sides, they're like cocoons, faster to the inner side of them. Just glowing slightly in the darkness, filling the room with just a little bit of light. Um, the, the, yeah, the lower you get on the floor, there's like a ground level where most people are. Uh, you remember, Kuro, last time you were in here, there's a scene where you do your performances, if there's anything. Last time you were here, the old community was far lower. Than they are now. Now they are up on the second story, where all of you are seeing their three stories, uh, yeah, with the ground floor. And of course, the higher you go, the the more important you are to the king. And yeah, but there's a lot of people here. Mostly, uh, most of them are uh, like in your floor. It's, it's clergy members, musicians people who did something to be here, like, yeah, cultured people, like weavers, painters are, are kept in this floor. And your play is held on the podium level. It's raised significant off the fluid and floor. Uh, but first, uh, Deliria has bid everyone welcome to the celebration, to the bond between the clan Deliria and the clan Oglan. And he's wearing a gilt, gilded blessed breastplate with the green silken tunic. On the breastplate, he's sigil on his clan with a buck rambling a copper deer. And beside him, his new wife, Itikise, or um, Oglan, with a curly bear sleeked back, cascading down her back, her white dress with gray embroidery around her. And um, yeah. Her red lips is glistening off the light in the room from the torches and candles, colored in an array of different colors on the grace of cinder, as people are told. 
the actual binding of the two are not are done in more private manners, not something of a, a fest, because in the world of Sados and Bacchus, the wedding is not the binding, the wedding is the fest afterwards, where you show people that you have been bound to each other. So everyone knows. Of course, marriage is not normal between the satyrs, but if they are, people need to know about it. And, well, yours is not the only form of entertainment, your play. Uh, but you, you can make your role if you want to. In artist, diplomacy, or guile. And acroma, you can roll your minstrel. And but there's this play of acro uh, acrobatics shown from the silken bands in the ceiling by by agile that could sit. There are humorous poems about how Pilgrim, what Pilgrim had to do to uh, to get the essence of Bacchus to make the greatest tribe of human. And of course, it doesn't go well for Pilgrim. Food and drinks are abundance on the second floor balcony where you are all free. And of course, to you, Eros, there are an array of different pleasant smells, flower petals, small bowls with roses and other... I will certainly spring. examine each of them with my nose, with my sense of smell, to determine if any of them... Uh, pleasant is fine, but I want exquisite things that are new, things that are interesting, things that I believe I can distill down to their very base essence. That's the certain sort of sense that I'm looking for, so I... I do now, as I always do, sample the air and find if there's anything of particular interest to my nose. And, of course, also, if there's any sort of companionship here that might be worth pursuing. Otherwise, I, I leave that be. Let's get to that. Around you are, of course, like different uh, clergy of different gods and elder creators. And, of course, of Nefraxu in this floor. They are getting uplifted in the eyes of delirium. There is uh, salamanders with the like wet tunics on them, and they're standing like around a pinkish flame and examining it, speaking in this art guttural language, which seems to be like down down their throat too much for their face, but it seems flat some way. One of them, at least, and uh, there are like uh, there's an orc with a brown robe. He has like a golden ring on one of his tusks, and he's looking over the over the over the like balcony, a bit unnerved. Bes beside him is another, is a human, same colors as Deliria, brown eyes, tan, blonde hair in the same brown, and he's bare feet, just as the orc, but more. And he has like a golden necklace around his neck and there is yeah you can see Sue standing like showing off his wing to some other uh, some other of his kind they are looking rather impressed and like trying to touch it but he's like nah nah and you see like on on a table close to you there's a satyr like pouring alcohol over uh, well uh, ochre's bosom and for you and uh, as the Tix is desperately trying to get eye contact with you, but well, oh, I had to run. I had to run out of the room real quick, but I can always hear my name. What uh, <laughs> the rabbit ears? What uh, what's trying to get a? Uh, there's the Tix is desperately trying to get eye contact with you oh, yeah. on uh, on a, in the table where there's another sage pouring his drink over an ogre's but. So I, I will see, 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 she doesn't seem like she does, she's laughing. And I would definitely look in and give a gaze with my with my guile of six uh, at her to indicate there may possibly be some interest. Uh, a, a gaze with my eyes smile indicating my open flirtatiousness. She smiles and turn again, trying to like look away again and. And then looking back really too quickly. Yeah. And then smiling at you. Indeed. Yeah, and um, like as she's looking at you, the others can see there's like a you crew can like pick this up. You can hear like 
one who's mumbling in a in a in a in a tongue you know too well. You can see a red-haired kid soon, whose tail is like fluttering, ag agitated as he's mumbling, and that's like, oh, no, okay, right, oh. To uh, to this old hippon has like white st like spikes of feathers in his uh, blue coat, and then the like the hippon like takes a hold of his like collar, just he can nearly just nearly reach it, and he says, "Come back, the Kurosai," and like oh, the 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 the, the kids are like oh, like flutters a bit and then stands quickly. The kids soon is in like in in leather leather armor and has like a a staff with him, which is clearly not, there, were, there wasn't allowed any weapons, but this is clearly not a walking staff, this is clearly a weapon, but he has it anyway. And uh, there's like this, he's like holding his, shaking him, shaking him a bit, and then like letting go and like patting him on his stomach, and they like talk more quietly in, of course, the language of Kitsune. Ah, good. It's fine to hear Oh, and, and you will know that yeah, collection. And you will, uh, of course, know that Kampate Kurasai means like making an effort or like mending, making himself presentable. So, yeah. And they like look at you as you're like speaking. And then they look. Ah. I, I, you know, I, I approach them, you know, uh, arms wide, e even though one of them is a, is a deranged hibbon, that's fine. And I, I'm just glad to hear Kalixin again to, to see to see the Kitsune, and I, and I think internally like, ah, other Kitsune, they've heard the call. More and more will come here, and again Kikilia will rise, though not from the plains of Katik, that cursed place, but here those towers will rise once more. This is uh, internal thoughts. Instead, I, I just like snatch some drinks off the, the plate of uh, of like a satyr and like beep, just gank them and then I'm like ah hokumasio kudasai and you know I, I, I give them drinks drinks to share um, the uh, the hibbing gets gets like the smallest one it's small claw fingers and it's like looking up at you yes yes look look here this this play that I've written, it is, is being performed so expertly, so divinely by my players. I've selected each one of them as, as one might select the perfect grape for creating the perfect wine, and I've fermented and distilled them to skill beyond skill. Behold the wonders. And, and as Arkova's tunes, you know, flutter over the, the stage, and the, the players are up there, and I, I found the tallest human that I could to play King Deliria, and he's got like a, a rainbow mask, and he's got rainbow robes, and uh, there's there's another human in, in a mask to make her look like um, Ectasis, uh, and and the the play it, it is just constantly constantly reinforcing how how glorious a, a king that Deliria is, and how he just stirs dream stuff and just brings whatever he wishes out of out of the very eth ethereal mind space every night as he creates his own kingdoms and how glorious um, Ectasis and her beauty is that skin is as dark and as and as beautiful as the perfect teak wood and um, you know how glorious they are and there's oh there's some some body references to uh, the the fecundity of the humans and you know like many clay pots are brought out like oh you know, re representing like, oh, they're gonna have a bunch of kids, and like the pots are piling up, and Ectasis is like, oh, carrying a bunch of them. That such such will be the 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 bounty of uh, of the line of Deliria, and and the uh, the human population growing and growing, and you know, the like all the satyrs and ogres laugh at that the most, and you know, the humans, uh, you know, they they enjoy having their their lineages praised, and I just I know how to pander to <laughs> to each and every one. You know, I'm I'm walking amongst the crowd. I have, you know, an outfit that's probably a bit more presentable than, say, a an average orc would. As I do try to keep it clean, keep myself clean and presentable. And I'm and I move amongst the crowd a bit. And I have a uh, a nice uh, a nice clay cup of wine 
and, uh, and now that I sort of sip at it, and I look at Arkova, you know, as he's up there playing, and I'm and I'm t like, there's a few moments that maybe Arkova, you'll see me amongst the crowd, and I'll, and I'll be looking at you, um, and you know, when you if you make eye contact with me, you know, I'll, I'll just sort of nod a bit, and then I'll and then I'll leave like amongst the crowd, but um, then I, I see uh, I see Kuro uh, with his uh, Another kitsune, but uh, other than that, I I look up at the orc on the balcony now and then. But but I definitely am trying to understand this weird this this play is just is I have no idea what what is that. Uh, I'm just and like and these people, I'm just like hmm, like very much almost like an outsider. But I'm just like trying to understand their these strange ways, and the, and the play itself is, it's, oh, I'm on the same balcony, okay. um, in which case, I, I mean, I'll, I'll go to that other orc with the gold, gold ring on his tusk, if he ain't with an entourage, I'll be his entourage. He has, like, a, a, there's a human beside him in the, like, same robe. All right, so but, I'll but go. That's his entourage of like there's like a an annoyed human standing like looking at him as he's like leaning out like oh, and then moving back and then leaning out again and then like and then, like speaking to him and this is like like very strange, like very like slow, very like grindy. It's not really Fraxa, but it's very close to Fraxa, mm -hmm. but still different. And they're speaking like well, I can't make them. Sounds I want then to there's make, like but... that, like, the, like I put my hand gently, like, you know, comforting. And I go on this, not on the side of the, where the human is, but on, just on the other side of him. And I, and I put a hand on his back. And I look at him. It is, and I say in Thraxa, it is quite strange, is it not? Mm. I gesture to the Very plant. strange. I do not understand the pottery that keeps being mm. <laughs> I know the one that, I know the one that has made this uh, I think at times his mind uh, this is why I believe it is so difficult to understand uh, that hmm. you hmm. you live Jodana here. said he liked it. Oh, yes. Hmm. I, I am. He, he, yeah, my friend do not understand uh, Thraxa, and he like points to his like the human friend beside him. And then he has like, like he's like a gold based. apple necklace. He like looks at you, and then he like. Mm. I almost give like an imposing thing, like okay, you could leave now. Like I kind of do that, but then I I turn he to. Step to like the other step like one one step back, like. I turn to the other orc and I nod and I, and I say in Pelganese, "Do you understand this?" And I gesture to the. He like looks. Uh, do you gesture to who? To the, the human. orc or the human? Yeah, the human the like. Like, not, like... I have a question yeah. for you. Hmm. Why yes. does that one carry many pots of clay? He looks down at her. I believe it's a, a reference to... to the slain term, clay man. Hmm. Looking at it. I see. That is distasteful. It's well presented. Mm. Is that what He's you think? Looking, look at, look, looking down at it. Yeah. He's like, uh, you, can, you can see that he's like, I don't know, you have some insight, don't you? Yeah. A little insight. Yeah, he's, he's, trying, he's trying to be nice about it. Maybe he, he likes it a bit, but... Yeah. Mm. You can also I've see spoken, that 
I had being spoken hurt. and I gestured to the ogre down there playing the mandolin. I had spoken with that one. I had called it Beast. Hmm. Like others, perhaps, called you Clay. And I'm not looking at him, I'm just, you know, looking down at the at the festivities. Mm. These words, mm, he say, it does not uh, have weight on his brow, but I think they do not like this. And you? Mm. No. You are not of clay. You are different, yes. But... You are a friend of all. Like... He's like, he's smiling a bit. You can just, he's just, from a fake smile, you can like now see his teeth. They're a bit crooked, but yeah. You're a friend with Orc here. Mm. You a winemaker? He, he like shakes his head, and he like puts up the like the the golden the the golden apple necklace. I look at that. He's showing it to you. Mm. I see. And of course, I have that flashback of that. Rotten lake, the tree in the middle, the island. But I refrain from telling them that. I, I'm not like giving them my contact. I'm just sort of, you know, sort of sitting at the balcony with them, looking down. I'm, I'm, Lille, Biakima. He, the orcs, of course. Look at you. Yep. You are. Alpatax. Oh, actually, no, I say, uh, Alpatax untok shwata vixpikida. But he, like, not, like, impressed. Just, hmm. Long name. And he, like, looks at, he, like, looks at Jodada, uh, uh, Jodada, trying to, uh, trying to, 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 you can see him, like, like, nodding at him, like, this is, uh, this is impressive, and he, and you can just see the human just all confused. Just, hmm. But uh, mm, it is the name given to me, and I, and I and there's like a bit of sadness to it to that when I say in Thrax to the orc, as uh, he would know it translates to we call from ruin. And uh, but I but then I change the subject and I say in Palkanese to the human. Uh, why are you up here, and not down with your people? It is uh, strange. I see many of your people amongst their own kind, not separate. Why is this, huh? I I follow something greater. I follow life. Ah. And he like shows shows just the necklace again, like. It's the, like the greatest piece of bling you can ever like ask for, and he like holding it up like all proud. Like, okay. I like play that off kind of like, all right. uh, but I nod. Mm -hmm. I see. Hmm. I, I I follow the grandfather, the father of Pelgrim. Hmm. But as I've learned from Lily, hmm. I know. Ground is more important than city. Hmm. You'll do well here in Flame Dance. I hmm. sort of look at him. He's like smiling. Like, mm. and, I turn and he's looking down at the clay pots. Good, good playing, your friend there. He's, he's good. Hmm. Your words are lies. I know this. His play is strange, and he is strange as well. Do not be afraid to speak this in front of me again. He looks at you like... And then he like becomes quiet and like... <laughs> like the, and I, I don't like just, look at him. Just, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. Lily just looks at him and, and looks at you and like... 
No, no, no. This, this is good. You enjoy <laughs> that? Truly. Mm. He like, he, he, he's like, I mean, he has like a sympathetic look at uh, J Jujala, like, it's, it's not you, it's him. Like, <laughs> and. Mm. You enjoy it then. It is lost on me. I say when I, I take a drink from my my cup. I turn to them. Enjoy the time. They like, smile at you and I turn around. Begin, like if you get like, and then you can see like he's like the Jodala is like speaking in this strange language. For, uh, these strange like low pitched noises coming from him and the, the other one's like nodding and smiling at you. And I, and I put like a reassuring hand on like the orc's arm kind of and I, and I leave. Just like a man in a party just, just meeting and greeting people. Hmm. I, I leave them to their business. And so you do. And we get back to you, Andor. I am at some point going to slyly approach the Citrix and uh, there's much revelry and dancing. Is this to be known? Yeah, yeah. There's just some, but there's more like on the ground floor where there's a lot of like uh, middle, high middle, middle class like humans. They are getting more crazy here. Obviously, like there's like the ogre on her, you know, the the ogres and the satyr on her table who are. Yeah, but uh, there's uh, there's some dancing, but it's more quiet up here. Well, I will take the citrus by the hand and lead her to the appropriate place for dance and begin to engage in more of a courtly, elegant dance that might well fit in here. I'll be using my diplomacy for understanding of such things. Uh, that is my custom. She seems not the greatest at this kind of dance, but uh, she keeps trying to do like more, let's say, other types of dance with you. Trying to show off her body with the dancing, but not really. Because when you're trying to get her to call the dance, she like steps out of it very quickly, missteps to dance the other way. And she, but she has like a playful smile when she's doing it, trying to. I will lead her back to somewhere more quiet and secluded, and begin to. Uh, Ravage her with my kisses. This is the way lust. And well, she's not fighting that, I guess. Yeah, no Smiling. Small clocks of laughter comes as she like pull like she's like holding your hair, smelling it. And oh, I smell very nice. I will assure you, I always smell very, very nice. Mm -hmm. You like that, don't you? you like the scents in my hair. I don't like these common ruffians. Oh, that it is a pleasure. I am Eros Adonis, my dear. A name which be etched into the annals of your mind for the time that shall remain existence. Did I have you just smiling at you. He has like big blue eyes looking up at you, smiling. Um, I'm, I'm Camilla. He smiles. Well, your kind is very rare from what I have grasped. Is this not the case? Is this what I have been told by my companion? Yes. Um, very rare, and he like she's like touching your hair, like you. He's smiling up at you. Well, no, God, you. not very ridiculous, not quite like me. But I am. <laughs> I am not rare, my dear. I am unique. Mm. He just smiles up at you. He's all entranced and, and, and too happy, but. 
in the walking desert wind. I am the perfect formed figure. Yes, you'll enjoy this immensely, I'm sure. <laughs> so, yeah, I, just, I continue yeah. my flirtations and dalliances with her until the ultimate rapturous lovemaking begins. Um, and she seems to know her, play, her, 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 yeah, her hooves around this place. Knowing a good place for this, bit more quiet, but not too away. Yeah. Very well. I take that as you wish. We shall go. Uh, this is still relevant to me. Yeah, uh, at at the time, quite honestly, and uh, I, I shall uh, adjourn to the sojourn, and uh, not soon shall I return. Yep. We go back to Kuro standing over the balcony, and you've been acquainted a bit with, oh, well, not a bit. And you just see the two of them just staring at a Krover. They, like, what? And he, there they're just like the hip and it's like shifting, and then like looking between the bars of the balcony. And he's like looking up at the other. And they, they, they look at you. No. And they look down again. And they look at each other. And, I go, and then they look at you. He's a good, uh, good player. Mm. Yeah. You are correct in your assumption that is, in fact, the one and the only, the skilled, the mountain who sings, the mountain who plays, Arkova. His, his red and dulcet tones will dance about in your skull and remind you of the days long past, the days that have not yet come to be, and the days where you are, letting you relax in your chair and simply enjoy your time here upon this world. <laughs> yes, you, you, you love it. I can tell. I can tell by your smile. You are entranced. You are beguiled. You wish to to go over there and and shower his copper cup with your riches earned by sweat, breaking your back, bending under the the farming implements. But here, here you, you hear the beauty. <laughs> you sense that, that, that clip very nicely. So, not a work. Hard day in that hippin's life, I, you're sure, but you know. <laughs> oh, look at I, I just assume he was a he was a retired gentleman, a man of, uh, of leisure in his late cycles. And you can see the 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 kid soon just mm, <laughs> he advisor to the king. Oh, truly. Mm. Truly, then, you you must be well acquainted with the earthy pleasures of the court. You have heard minstrels from every land, but you have not heard Arkova yet. And now it is your, your privilege, I must say, to understand his mandolin, how it speaks to you in the language that we all know, the language of music. Yes, it transcends every tongue, and everyone knows the joy, or the sorrow, or the triumph, or the bitter defeat, depending on what his fingers dine to play upon those strings. Those strings must be truly woven from the sun stuff plucked from the sky and placed there upon that mandolin. You know, it is an ancient thing. And I lean in close. It was passed down from ogre to ogre to ogre. There's not even a word in our language for great 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 grandfather. That is the first ogre to pass it down, and it has been spinning the same music ever since. It is older than you and I. It is older than flame dance, I suspect. Truly, 
Ahura Mazda itself must have heard these tunes. Far, far back in time. A brighter time. A time that Arkova is bringing back. Bringing back with one song at a time. Mm. And he, they like nod at you, like. Mm -hmm. oh, truly. You can see like the hippo just nodding at you. Just. Mm. And looking at you and then like looking at the other one. And they're like nodding at each other. Knowingly. Yes, yes. And as, as you advise, let, let me advise you to, to bend the multicolored ear of Deliria himself and let him know of Arkova. Let him know of Kuro, the playwright. For, you see, Arkova will not deal with anyone by himself. He has been cheated horribly in the past and he only trusts me to administer on his behalf. Oh. For I is can that, be trusted. Is that, is that so? Mm -hmm. Look at you. Mm. Someone did awful things to that poor ogre in the past. He used to be a he used to be a prince in the Damarian Mountains, something like mm -hmm. that. He has he has tales. I do not know them all, but he used to be dripping with gold and jewels, and he would actually uh, take a an entire emerald, put it in every glass of wine that he had. For such was his wealth. It was like a little snack, just a, a little, if, as as you may uh, consume, but a but a tiny one of them delicious insects that grows on the pine trees, as you may consume one of those. So did he consume emeralds. Oh, we we must meet this person, right? Kyukyum, and he like this. The the kids are like not like we need to meet him. Hmm? And then they like nodding, nodding at you, like mm, all I like, convinced and like happy. I'm a, uh, I, I'm a uh, tilt up tap, and he like puts his little hidden clawy hands up at you. Uh, very well. And I shake it in the same way that like I would shake Sue's, you know, hand. Yeah, and he like, shakes it. And there's like no strength to his grip. He's clearly mm -hmm. just an old man, but very uh, old. But he like smiles over at you. Can we? Uh, I hear this. This the song's over. The play will soon be over, right? And he like uh, looking, yeah, looking down. It's, it's such a good. It's such a good play. Oh, and he's, thank like, you. Smiling, and and then like when the the last like lines are like this over at sang all the little cocoons like open. Like by a magic spell, and f fill the room with just these beautiful butterflies glowing everywhere in these blues and greens colors, filling the filling the room, and everyone's just stopped in awe as they look at this. And that is when Arkova begins to bust out into this most horrific of solos. It starts off slow, pattering at first, but then he breaks off a tradition and begins spinning those strings like never before, and all of a sudden the pace gets faster and faster as he begins mixing up several different styles into one as he's sitting there playing back and forth. Yeah. And you can see like people just looking down at you, just all in awe at your playing and on this like display, this this lucky coincidence you think, Kuro, as you see the the beautiful flowers and everyone just looking up at you, Akova, and you can feel just there. There's like, there must be like a hundred people in here. Oh, perhaps oh, more he, than that. He takes it in and he walks around as he starts doing this. He just looks at everyone who get up close to someone and play real close, then back away and just start running around. You're up, you're up on the scene like uh, like three feet up from the from the ground level, maybe four feet. Oh, he'll get up to the very edge and just lean over and play a bit, just like a rock star, and then lean in right back. And then for the finish, he'll get on his knees and then lean all the way back playing as if somehow stretching out every last chord as he does so. And you can see, like, feel like, like, yeah, cheering, all happy, and just holding their hands up to 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 touch the butterflies, and all entranced, and and happy. And 
well, then they they look up at you and like they they're clapping as the the butterflies like slowly just put they're sitting on the walls where people can't reach them because people are like they want to touch one they want to get one and there's some like having in their hands and they're yeah not nice to them but oh, let's see if you can get this oh and soon. You are let off the stave on Crover. Uh, people are like, like clapping on your shoulders as you're walking out to the second floor with your mandolin. All you can see their happy faces on these claymen, satyrs, ogres. Few orcs down here. They are not. They are very slow. They just put their hand on you as you, and as you walk past, they don't remove it. They just you move. Oh, I, I. I have this huge scent. If I was a Freyne, I would be glowing so bright right now. Uh, he's just walking along. He's got this sense of pride flowing through him. And for just but a brief moment in this time, it, it feels like the troubles of the world have melted away. And he relishes this moment. For this is the moment where he can find peace at mind. And he relishes it. He'll take all of this in. He'll, he'll even grab hands. He'll shake them. People hand him babies. He'll kiss them. He'll do all. There's no babies. <laughs> but you you, you get uh, there's someone uh, like giving you the butterflies that cat caught like the half dead butterflies still glowing, but there's still butterflies. You know. And yeah. And as you're walking up, you know, to the to the. Ascending balconies, you know, you, you make you see me there, and I'm like, and like you're approaching, and like I see you, I make eye contact with you, but then you keep approaching, and you're like, oh, you're all jubilant, and I'm just like, and like I get that look, like oh, 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 oh no, he's 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 coming this way, isn't he? Oh. <laughs> and when you're close enough, I, I just want to nod to you, uh, but that's uh, <laughs> all. I do. I, I, I give you a firm pat on the shoulder and I and I lean and I lean over towards you and I say thank you for suggesting the place. It has mm. given me much to think about, as the name of it suggests. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 walks off laughing. I just look at you and I just do not good essay. I enjoy my time, as this is one of the rare times that I would dare drink uh, Seder wine. It's not only right. Seder wine. They have oh. all kinds of wine, but it's it's mainly Seder wines. But there's plain wine, it's you know, the Lord of wine, mixed wine. Mm -hmm. There's but also, know, also so. uh, like... Uh, like Sprite wine, but it's like it's small, so small country, you can't nearly like taste it before it's gone. So I'm sure very it's strong good sweetness. Yeah, the like. But you know, I look taste. at the. I mean, I look at the butterflies like they're you know, maybe a bit of wonder, but other than that, I'm. I'll see someone. Some of them are like landing on you because you're not moving. All the others yeah, are like moving. Sort of yeah. They seem to enjoy that. The quiet. Like if there's a uh, like a human that like you know there's a butterfly it's, it's fluttering around and it's like like it lands on my shoulder and a human is trying to grab at it. I just I just look at that human and I just look at him like very cold look like step away kind of thing like a silent sentinel. Guard that butterfly. Like, they can see the human like mm -hmm, it's a orc. <laughs> and no, move I away. Back and I just continue drinking with some other I could barely feel them on my skin, having tough skin and wearing clothing. Yeah. They're still like glowing, fluttering. And well, enjoying their time. But 
yeah, you and Crowbar are met by uh, an old hippon and, uh, and a male kitsune. They're like walking up to you very fastly as you're getting up and like, ah, oh, clapping. Like, sh like the kitsune's like smacking at your arm and the, the little hippon are, are clapping. He can't make no sound with his hands because like small scratching sound, but he's trying and like all like, ah. Oh. With the fluttering he, of his feathers and stuff. Yeah, like. <laughs> You see, there's like a, a one like white feather who like falls off from his furious movements of this old, clearly old, old hippon. And they like look, they look back at you, Kuro, as if like they're waiting for you for a bit. And the the the, the young younger one looks at you. It, it, it was this not your friend? Not the Yes, yes. Lo, yeah. lo here. Behold, Arkova. And no, this is... So then tap, uh, you know, like, as I mispronounce the Hibbin's name, like... I don't you can see him, like, looking, looking up at you, like, oh, I was, like, like smiling. Mm. Mm. Go ahead. And, it, you know, the, the Kitsune, like, he, he didn't give any, didn't give any names. Like, and here is one of my... Uh, a, a long lost cousin, one one must assume, yes. Another Kitsune, one of one of many that will be entering flame dance and feeling the flame and the and the joy and the beauty of this place, this enchanted, intoxicating place. You have enchanted and intoxicated them, although I think some of that was, was done a bit a, a bit on their own, huh? And you know, I sort of like gesture that you know, they've got their, their mugs and such that I gave them. <clears throat> and they wished to meet you, to hear your your words, they've heard your mandolin played so well. They wish to know more about you. Tilip Tab here advises the king himself. Oh, you see that there's that... like a little hippo that's like like nodding at you. And oh, then... and as he, as he as he he doesn't just nod; he gives a slight bow as he does so. This is uh. And he like, shakes, like, like shakes his little hand. You, uh, I, I've heard, uh, I heard a lot, of, a lot about you now. Uh, why are you here? You here to win your fortune back? And he's looking at at uh, Kuro. Uh, upon hearing that, uh, you know, Arkova kind of thinks back. Fortune, no. and then he, you know, his the wheels in his head begin to turn, and then he looks over at Kiro, and mm, he gives like a silent nod. You could say such, yes. I am uh, looking to uh, win back my fortunes, so to speak, and perhaps gain even more. Do you see the the the, the kid soon just looking at you? Uh, I'm a uh, crickyel. Yeah. And he like putting put his hand up, putting the wrong hand up, and then like changing to the right hand, smiling up at you. <sighs> you is it true? Do you eat sapphires? Oh, why why you come here? Why um, when when did you come here? So so like his his brow kind of raises and uh, <laughs> upon that comment and he goes Well um Sapphires aren't uh, easy to eat, of course, but uh, a stomach such as mine, and he pats his, uh, uh, the abs upon him. <laughs> oh, it could be done, my friend. It can be done. Uh, and we both know they were, they were emeralds. Yeah. Oh. Offset by the, the, that brilliant green, offset by the blood red. Yeah. And he'll kind of yeah. lean in. He'll kind of lean into them both and go, well, <laughs> they came in as emeralds. They come out as sapphires. It's ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> having like slide. And then they then the, the kids soon look up at you. Oh, cute. You know, you know so so much about about Julie. Are you a jeweler? And he looks up at you smiling, huh? Oh, you know what's fashion? I, I could I thought they were one of the same. No, no, I've, I've seen them from afar, admired them from afar, but no, no, I'm not a jeweler. I do not yet 
have the same uh, peacock-like countenance as some. And, you know, I, I, uh, I, think, I think back to, like, King Deliria and his, and his opulence. And that was, the opulence was, was done using, like, beads of glass and just, you know, colored, colored robes and colored paper, you know, upon the, the King Deliria that I have on stage. But I look to him and I think, yeah, someday, yeah. And at this point, well, arrows, you are getting uh, like dragged out again uh, through the yeah through the second uh, second. I'm gonna uh, find my friend Quiro with my new conquest. Yeah, he, she's like hanging on your arm, smiling up at you. This is my like just slightly like changing her clothing back on. Very obvious, but... My good companion. <laughs> Quira, see? They do exist, the satyrs. They do have females. You know, it's speculated that it might be the case. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, how they would do. Yeah? But it's like showing the horns. Well, Smiling. would you look at that? Uh, yeah, I, I look I look at the horns uh, being, being shaped... Shaped a bit differently. Yeah. Those those eyes so so large and so bright, they ought to be commended. And I, I could I could scent her from uh, from a mile away. And you've uh, you've done a great job at at improving her olfactory greetings. She's <laughs> just look at you like <laughs> just looking at you. And I, like moving, slightly moving her like horns down, like showing that she could like stay good at every really moment. Like looking at you, her eyes like narrow, just that old like racial hatred just flaring up in those blue eyes. But yeah, she like looks up at arrows and then she's like all like sweet I again. I, I rub her face Yes, my companion. Uh, I see clear of you are always swift to make new friends. Such a a charming disposition you have, for sure, my fox fay. He's like smiling at you, like notching her horns up against your arm. <laughs> you can see, like the the two, the other two are like looking at her, and they're they're speaking in uh, in quick uh, like Smile. saying, like, "Can it be true? Like, is there really a Texas? Exist, and they're all like speaking. May maybe for you to hear Kuro, then, and she's like smiling. Then, uh, Arkobo, look, looking at the scene, he'll look over at her and he'll go, "Why are they all? Um, hmm, they all have this look of amazement about you. Uh, are you of? Um, are you of royalty?" Hmm? Hmm. Yes. And she like looks smiling. And then she looks at you again, like waiting for you to say something and then like showing her whole self again to you, like and smiling. Oh when he when she does that he kinda just leans in close and goes, I am Arkova. Hmm. Means mountain's <laughs> voice. I played that wonderful tune. And he'll, yeah. he'll he'll turn it around and start playing it again. Yes, it's a little bit of a little, 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 little. Oh. Alcova, my companion. Yes. Well, that, that was you. Oh, and he she looks up at you and was like. Mm. Yes, yes, I surround myself with no, the finest things. I assure you, and I and I take my hand and sort of dance them around her head, uh, absently fiddling with her horns. She's just smiling brightly. You can see the two of them just looking at her. And then the kid kid soon leans from from a cover. So you should make a lot of money by playing music? Is this what you do? Oh yes, of course. Uh, it is my life. Amongst other things. What other things? 
And kind of, kind of real. Like, interesting, like his little nose, like sniffing at you, like getting closer. He, he kind of reels back a little bit upon that other thought, not not thinking that they actually would have pressed him forward for more questions. But when that prompts up, he he leans forward. Oh, helping out friends here and there, that sort of thing. And of course, for those who have crossed me, and he leans forward upon him, they receive other things most unkind. But that is not for discussion, because we are in celebration! Ha ha ha! Plays a little <laughs> jolly full tune real quick. Quickly, uh, quickly changing the uh, the mood of the conversation. You can see the like hidden and the the kids soon just sharing like a glance with each other. Mm. Well, <laughs> you are a, a jolly uh, a jolly sort. In <laughs> looking at a cobra, like smiling. So, uh, three. Of you meeting in flame dance? I what? And then he like they stop and they like look at arrows for a while, just like they didn't notice him before. They're like staring, and then they're like, did you see the hip and like looking utter confusion on his face? And then the the I begin to smell it. Does it smell like the same filthy hibbins? Oh uh, yeah, but it smells better. There's like uh, like a cologne like smell like old man cologne if you know that. I definitely want to eat badly. And I'll glance yeah. over to Quiro. Yes, yes, this one here and I'm I'm petting petting the hibbin. This one here so is you're like like smiling up at you like advisor to the king. Yeah. I, do I think it's the same hibbin, or is it just too hard to tell? Uh, it has like patches of white fur on it, so it's definitely not the same hibbin. All right, so I'm just kind of trying to figure out like, if it knows something. It just looks up at you with those big, like orange oh. eyes. Just looking. Really, I'm just trying to kind of figure out what it tastes like. I'm like, oh, you must be fucking delicious. Um, greetings, I am Eros Adonis. I am pleased to make your acquaintance. Good. I'm a, a Tillop Tap. Yes. Miles over you. That's wonderful. Wow. Beautiful. Oh, I thank you. I appreciate your I'm, kind I'm, word. You can see like a bit of like glimmer in his eyes. I would. I would say I have not seen anything so mesmerizing. <laughs> yes, well, again, my humble uh, appreciation. I note that you wear a cologne upon you. We'll be in the process of opening up a business. Pleasure. You shall have to come and examine my wares and the stall that shall soon be coming. It is, I assure you, something more. Uh, to your liking, will be provided in the essential essences that we have for sale. I I will look into that. Well, that's that's good. Well, I have heard pleasure. Is this your the name? Yes, of course. What other name could uh, in any way be? Apropos of such exotic finery, imagine the base essence of a thing and being able to wear it to drape your flesh in something ephemeral. Oh, it is perfect concoctions that I am creating, and candles and other finery that you will just simply have to delve into to gain a proper understanding of. I assure you, your time will be most rewarded 
in the possibilities contained within as well. I welcome your inquiry in the near future. And I breathe a scent thing in deeply, wondering what its oils might smell like. He like looks over you like smiling all yeah, it kinda of pulls away. I'm like, you know, I'm always searching for the perfect fragrance. I'm quite dedicated to my craft, I will assure you. Mm. Really? Oh most certainly. So why why did they come here to, to flame the ants? He smiles at you. I have... Is it because of our known... Well, flair for... Taste? He smiles, like, searching yeah. for the words, like his small... Yes, I believe that such a place could house most interesting potential um, items to harvest to make exactly... What I have been searching so many, <gasps> many cycles to find, to bring here in resurrected, transmuted glory. <sighs> and I smile, shining my perfect white teeth. He's like smiling up at you, and then the Cetixus says, You know, so I. Yeah, he speaks like a poetry book sometimes, and he like, like, yeah, trailing her finger against your clothing, in circles, yeah. smiling. That's, you are, you are correct. I mean, he, he like smiling over you, and then the hippon is like, looking at her, and then like, like, like waiting for like if he has to like, she's lo he's looking at her, as if he's trying to. Remember something? There's like a bit of like loading time, and then he looks <laughs> up at you again. You when uh, when when will those business open? Yes, soon. We are in the process of collecting several financial contributors to this otherworldly extravaganza. This is my uh, manager here, I believe the word he used, uh, Quiro, the... Uh... Yes, yes, manager, financial advisor. I go by many names, for I have many tasks that I must complete. Now, and, and, many, and, many, and many talents. He's oh, uh, the gesture uh, towards you. the state. Yes, he is very talented. You are too kind. Now, our business is being stymied, is being held up, is being drowned as if a, a block of iron were tied around its feet and it was cast into the lake around Flame Dance. You see, one of the Salora brothers is uh, dragging his feet as his kind only can do and refusing to give us the proper payment to set up a not, not, just, a, not just a cart, as was our original intention, but an entire boutique near the uh, the swing as it would bring so much traffic to both his establishment and ours but he is for some reason reticent he finds me me of all people to be a uh, rude and churlish but I sure it is he who is the churl he is a uh, a rancid and I, I do believe uh, a drunkard. Well, he's made of iron, really. What can you expect? Yes, he is rusted to the core. No. Yes, I quite like that, yes. And I stroke the Thetixus again. I stroke her. She's smiling. Like, Chaney's, like, drinking. There's wine. The wine is abundant, so she's smiling, leaning a bit up against you. Holding her like small hooves upright, which must be a sure task for all satyrs when wine is poured inside them. And 
you can see there's yeah, Apitax, ah, slow, moving, strange creature is getting closer to you, as if it's going to speak to you or going to take your butterfly off you. It's know them as a salamander, looking up at you. I just look at it. As you hear like the crackling flames emit from this slimy mouth and it's looking up at you. So I browsed and where I would browse would wait would be it's, it's raised up and it looks at you for a while and then it If you wish to speak with me, speak uh, I'm saying in Palkanese, speak in tongue of human. If you know, he like gets quiet by by like moving his jaw a bit. I'm sort of like he, almost like looking he, like, at him, very a little bit of caution in my mind, but like I'm more like almost aggressively trying to read him and understand. He's like looking at you, and then he like tries in Sindarian. You speak this tongue, orc. That's not. Hmm. What you say, you come, uh, you admire a butterfly like many. I would like to know how you are on this floor. Do you know why? It's looking at you, sitting up on a stool. I'm glad to see mm, the followers of Nefraxu here as another elder creator. Mm. I'm here because I walked up the stairs. This is why I'm here. <laughs> like looking they're not yeah, people I stopping like you. It's like it's not people stopping you like last time. Mm. Many people have a gesture to my drink. Perhaps uh, not too strict. Mm. I bring in no dirt. I look down. I am no bother. Flame dancer. He looks at you. But Are you to escort me down? Don't... What? Are you to escort me down? Is this no. why you come to me? Mm. I was just curious. I will ask another one of your kind. I just don't see a lot of them. Hello? Mm. It's best to keep your ear close to the ground. I have no ear. Like looking up at you with all the little like, weird things on his head. Like, I just nod. Like in a green. I'm sure yeah. they will answer your queries. You can see him like get off the stool, just looking at you, and then walking away slowly on all fours. I just look at him like, oh, uh, but like I'm, all, I'm, I'm. There's a bit of like, uh, like suspicion on that thing. I'm sorry. Cause I heard the tales of the reptilian snake men, and then there's this other lizard that just spoke to me. You can see him like walk over to some of the others. Is speaking, looking at you slightly. Mm -hmm. and seeing that, you know, I I just look at like one of the other orcs, and then, but I I I move. I finally move. Whew, and some of the butterflies perhaps go off me. Yeah, yeah. Um, as I I actually I I go towards the the, the singing mountain, uh, and I look for him, and you know I'll make my way over to him. 
I don't think he will be hard to, to miss, but you can just see them looking at you, and then you can see like them like walking over to one of that guy walking over to another of the orcs, and the orcs like not even looking at him. But then, yeah, trying to ignore each other. But not been here long, so. Arkova. Ah, yes, my friend. I see others around you have calmed. I say as I, you know, I, I say in a Pelagonese to you, and then I, and then I speak in Sundarian when I get in sort of like the conversation circle occurring. And I see Eros and Kuro with the other Katsun and the other Haven. But I look at Arkova and, hmm, it is, uh, Good to see that you had joy in your performance. I... Eh, too fast for me, but eh, it was interesting. Oh, yes, I... Um, when I get into it, when I feel the rhythm, mmm, that's uh, like the beating of a fast heart. It just keeps going and going, and you have to go with the flow. But, You're uh... Oh uh, yes, let me let me introduce you though to uh mm. these two here. This is uh Telip Tab and this one over here is Q Gyum. You can see they're like nodding at you. Of the tags. You can see the the smaller one. Like Hip and looking up at you, like putting his hand up to shake it. I just look at that like that's a strange sort of gesture, and I slowly bring my hand up in front of him. And then he grabs it. I'm like, oh. then I sort yeah. of awkwardly, my hands out just like this, and just, seen it before. He can, he can nearly, he can nearly not move it. He has like a, like he has like a strength of like six, so you can mm -hmm. just imagine how like. Like moving a big orc hand, there's like nothing is happening, but he's like moving his arm. Like, mm -hmm. I can just see him. I'm not. I'm I'm, I'm tap. All right. And he like points at the Satixus. What is uh? What's your name? And he's like he 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 looks at at him. I'm 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 Camilla. And he like. Mm. And then he like. She grabs another drink and begins drinking more, and he looks back at you, the hippon. Uh, do you you know the you know a crover? Hmm. Uh, just a uh, one salad is. That that's strange. You. The said that how uh, how are you acquainted? How? Like smiling up at you. I look at our I look up at our cover and back down at the heaven. Uh, I out on wagon outside mm -hmm. flame dance. Mm -hmm. I see sad sadness sad. Chain, and I like hit my arm like this. Chain, and I gestured to Arkova. Oh, this is, and then Arkova, he walks right inside the middle of all this, and he goes, and let me tell you the tale of what had happened that day. Ha <laughs> <Yes>. ha. <laughs> you can see them like, oh, like, like they were like looking at each other when they shared tape, like. Apotex, the modest. Now, now spin us a tale, Arkova. Oh, yes. So there we were, traveling along to our way to flame dance. Then suddenly these noseless monsters came upon us. Ah, oh, yes. See, you can see, like, the hippon, like, put his hand on his beak, and then, like, on this, like, the, 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 the spot where the nose should be, and he looks at you, like... And, and, and he'll, like, take his finger and smush his own nose and, like, and start doing this gesture... Yes, they were loathsome to behold, for sure. Mm. 
their flesh smelled rotten, and they made us chained, and then they had us go into this lake whose very waters would burn at your feet to dig out bones of the dead. But oh, oh, oh. lo there, oh. I had a yeah, plan I did. As I was being shuffled out, I fell to the ground. I made them think that, oh, that I was down and out. But that's when they came too close. And I got up with a boast. And I gave them a left and a right. And they were down for the night. And our friends got loose. And we took them all down. And made our way here to Flame Dance. I'm like, like sort of behind him. I just have a sad look and I, and I nod. And they're like, oh, oh, it was, it was your plan doing it? You can see like the, the, the yeah. He, he leans in and he goes, that, like, it was um, spontaneous. Then he, like, you, you, he moved back like, like afraid of you. like. Oh, it, it was a spontaneous sequence of events, as they might say. But it all came together in the end. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. And then like, these people like, claps again. Try. Oh. From decayed flesh and land, I find them chained. They come to fertile land, flame dance. Play music and live. And they, they're like looking up at you. You are very, yeah, you are important in his tale. Mm. And he's like looking up. So, without you, Abatax, then he would not be free? Or would he not be here? Ah, I would not be here in Flame Dance. Lo there, mm. no. It is thanks to Apatax and his infinite kindness that we are here. He bound up my friend's wounds, pointing to our uh, er Eros. I'm not. Oh. It's a solid dispute. Like, nodding at you like... Mm. After a tough mm. battle with those noseless monsters, wait, wait, he patched wait, us you up. Heard? No, where, where were you hurt? And he's she's like... Touching you all over, trying to find out, like looking at your arms and what happened, Eros? Yes, they came upon us and chained us in horrid irons, but we did not stand for the right of slavery. We fought back, eventually. When our spirits stood on the precipice of soaring free or breaking and accepting bonds and chains, we took chains, wrapped them about necks, and did what men put upon must do to stand tall, to show triumph in the face of such cruel, hideous adversity. These Hobbs goblins were put there by the river bank. They were put with broken bone and other less savory wounds to lay and rot, for I think not even flies would find them appealing. Unfortunately, we were able to meet these other companions to lead us here to a wonderful greeting and lovely home, which was, of course, so much fairer than the one they wished to consign us to for the last remainder of our days. Oh, I shiver at gripping the Cetixus uh, closer. I could only imagine what ill fate they had planned for me. And of course, horrid back-breaking labor and the lash of the whip for Arkova and his kindred ogres. They would perhaps have lasted uh, a few cycles under the backbreaking labor that these creatures, cretinous as they were, would have put upon them. 
Ugh, but I'm sure my torment would have lasted cycle after cycle after cycle after cycle, long after they had been brutally beaten to death and expired under broken, hembered spines from work most menial. Sad. Too much uh, pain to them. But uh, look now. See only small mark. It was skillful administration of the Baba skill indeed. They had profane and sacrilegious chains that would burn the flesh. It was wrong and evil. Yes. Did you see them like looking all there. The thing that Pharaoh ever brought upon this world that I find most ill upon my, upon my delightful skin. I am sensitive, after all. Would you like like kissing your 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 wrist slowly and looking up at you? Hmm. As well, should someone be with so delicate skin as she like begins her hand trailing up at your arm and then she like yes, looks at the others and then she like like puts holds your arm again. Yes, you're far too sweet, my dear. But uh, but don't stop. It's quite nice actually. She smiles, continues a little bit. There was uh, a question I hear many say when watching your uh, uh, play, and I'm saying Sindarian to Kuro, um, why, um, why clay pot, why hold many? Oh, uh, yes. That was a, a bit of a joke, a play on words, you see. The, what uh, is this? The humans... They pride themselves in their fertility, and they are fertile. Not quite as much as some. And you know, I I do give a a, a nod towards the Satixis, giving her the the one compliment that I can uh, summon for <laughs> for a satyr. And uh, the joke is that the the they're clay man, and so the the pots represent the many many children that Deliria will no doubt have with his with his new wife, for they are young and beautiful, and they will, uh, well, they will be redoubling the entire population of the humans in this place, I am sure. Mm. I see. Yes. You you find it mirthful, I can tell. Hmm. Hmm. But, well, I think I forgot time. I think it would be a, a good time to hear some soliloquies because uh, the hour is going increasingly, well, longer, soon to be shorter. Let's see. So, but. I'm sorry they made the That's oh, right. I can't. Yeah, they, they made it wrong. So Well, and uh, your music is playing. I, I can't give it to another one if you want to. I just thought that you should go to, like, sleep first. This is a strange world I have entered. It seems that I have been placed upon the precipice of courtly politics. And rightly so. Such a place as this, its grandeur, would be a grand place for me to begin. What must 
be done. Oh, and to have a place like this upon bended knee before me in genuflection. Oh, that song of the ancient desert, gray and stiff with flame beside. Oh, to hear it here played with that one song that burns through the night. Perhaps somehow the ogre can learn that above the blasphemous thunder that rumbles from his belly. No, I believe that is beyond his inborn need for explosion. Uh, these courts, this place provides much strange fare. I have heard words of things that are still lurking within the oak and maples of their wood. I am intrigued by what possibilities persist there. What could be so grand in their shadows, but here in the open torchlight of the night, or oh, the sun's face as it looms slightly unpleasantly above. I am the grandest thing here of all, and what I shall bring, the pleasure that I shall give in its fullness to these undeserving wretches. Well, it shall be most interesting. And I have smelled so many of them, and I have caught the scents of spice and tree and things unknown to me yet with my woodcraft wafting in from that wood. Oh, I shall explore it. I shall search through. <laughs> this other Mihangi comes to me and seeks to put itself upon me, and I saw to that with confusion. I know my kind, and I know their minds are simple, and when put to purpose that causes vexation, they will move away, seeking to not have to dwell on thoughts they find unpleasant. And should he come again, I shall play another. For I should not have Quoro taken to the gallows. At least not yet. I have a use for him. The thing of commerce is not a thing for me. It is a dirty thing for small, weak creatures. It is a pharaoh's thing. But I think nothing smaller, weaker, or more pathetic than pharaoh. But I like what he says, that they rust, that they smell of rust, for they are things that cannot be eaten. They cannot be cleaned and cleansed even with the vitality of my essences. There is no use in this world for them. They are not even fit to worship. Well, it seems that they have lost all and hopefully will soon vanish from our world. But this, this place, should be the beginning of an epoch dedicated unto myself. I, I have heard that echoed voice across so much space, but it has brought me here, a scent carried on far winds, and I shall find that perfect scent. Yes, as I smell, I know it is getting closer, that elusive thing, whatever it is that I must add. I must <sighs> create, and I shall be its father, for I have been its slave, and I shall be more its master. I shall bring this love, this pleasure, this wonder to all those that are here, to all those in the world. They shall know the name of Eros Adonis. They shall know the true greatness that walks amongst them. Yes. And in the end, they shall know pleasure.
the uh, the evening continues on, and we we speak and we we joke, and there are more drinks shared. And at one point, I I take Q June, you know, aside, and I've got my arm over him. Like, yes, and here here Kikilia will rise once again. So I speak these words into his ear. I know not whether or not he will understand. And you know what that means. The return. The return of the Shadow Kingdom. Here, take this. It's dangerous. And I, and I take that, that steel dagger that I got from the from the Vigish, and I stuff it into his hands. Keep it close. You never know when House Culex will come for you. Traitors all. The crimson robes. Beware, or your blood will flow and dot their armor. They'll sink their capes into it, luxuriate in your rent flesh. Oh, I've seen it. You must beware. You must beware, my apprentice. And then I turn him around, like, uh, shoo him away to go, go, complete your tasks. Even though he has no idea what I'm talking about, go. Yes. Kikilia. Your spires will rise again. And I begin moving towards the stage. Now the empty stage, the players have all bowed. Eggs you went. They have left. The uh, the instruments lie dormant as Arkova and the rest of the band are mingling, enjoying drink and fun times. I step upon that stage. Oh, it begins here. Oh, another kid soon. Oh, I knew the day would come, but I, I was so surprised when it happened. To see another one of my kind was beautiful, and I'm sure I'll see more and more and more. They've answered the call just as I have. They've felt the pull of the dream. They have come here to embrace their destiny, and I, I will guide them. It will be a beautiful thing. And here, here we will call it New Kikilia, the name that falls off the tongue, a promise, a promise of a mother to a child, a promise of a future, a thing that my people have gone without for so long, so long. None have any idea more than I have. The cycle spilling through my hands like bits of sand through an hourglass. I've seen each and every one, each and every one of those bits of sand is a life, a life that I have lived, a life that I've seen, a life that I've taken but no more. Those sand droplets will pile up and I'll build a new future for my people. As they fill the bottom of the hourglass, all I need to do is but reach out and turn it. And thus, the secrets of the Oracle are the key to do this, the key to save my people. And here, here will be a kingdom and I sit, I sit upon the large oaken chair that we did up for King Delirious' throne in the play. And if the people of this kingdom desire a king, well, how could I deny them? And I take a seat and I feel the oak of those armrests. Yes. How could I deny my people? We cut back to that first scene, to that flame, that pale, tattooed face. The watcher, as he approached. Uh, look at the two of them speaking. So boldly do they speak the tongue of annihilation. What is he doing there? Strange dance, surely. He's leaving. What words were said, I wonder. We cut to the burial ceremony. As I am turning to leave from the three masters, the two masters and the matriarch, uh, 
Uh, Tatsu Che Tandroi. So far have you gone lost. You are hide your face, your skin, your orcish beauty, and shrank changed as it is by that damnable king that dare call himself higher and greater than the very land he says to rule over. You cannot rule over the land. You must give to it. The filthy people of clay Filthy humans. They eat, they take all that they can as a strange plague put upon this land by the gods that spun them. But what if... What if they could understand I wonder, what if they can see the land isn't something to be bound by chains, dug, ripped asunder, known by those fouler creations of the gods, those hobs, goblins. Uh, what if they can see strength the land of the tree, of the vine, of the bush. Listen and understand. Maybe. Arkova, I see his smile is happy, I think. But I wonder. It is just a thin veil which he casts over himself. I've seen what you've done. Is this you trying to learn from your mistakes? I wonder. I will speak to him. I wonder if he will listen to the words of the land. I'll show him to the house of contemplation, to a place where there is quiet, and there is slumber. Uh, it is the rare ogre that sees the truth, the orcish word, the orcish tongue, yet he speaks it. I wonder how much more he knows of the orcish heritage, its history. The way Kuro and Eros move about these people, these other fae, and the humans, it is strange. The dance that they do, the quickness of which they move, their tongues, the way they speak to one another. Why does he pet that other goat fae like that? Why does that one hold him so tightly? Uh, Smell, smell no musk. I could smell nothing which the female shares to this dark fay. I wonder if she knows how close she is to terror, to those teeth. My images flash as arrows <laughs> pulls away. The satyr leg, his face covered in blood in the moonlight. Mm. Perhaps there is no learning to come from that mind. It is sad. Very sad.
Oh, things are coming together now for me. I can see it now. I make my name well known. And I let my enemies know that I am here. And now that they know, I will use my connections to find them. All of them. Yes. How could the ear of the man who has the ear of the king turn down such a opulent minstrel such as I? That is right. They cannot refuse. He should not. I have his ear and thus the ear of the king and in turn I have the ears of my enemies, which I will paint all over this damn town! I will wear them as necklaces, and then I will eat all of their hearts! <sighs> and we zoom back as he leans his broad back up against the wall, and this is moments before the play starts his hands shaking with rage, grabbing onto some forgotten, discarded prop of the show, and he twists as he keeps thinking about these situations in his mind. He keeps thinking about it, reeling back over and over, playing again that scene of his father getting stabbed by those ducats said over and over and over again. This wheel of insanity that spins into utter rage as he twists the prop and it breaks into his hands, the veins bulging. But then they call his name. Uh, uh, Akuva! Uh, time for you to, to play! Come on, come on! And he looks back and gives a slight nod, knowing that he has to get his performance back on track, get his mind back to that seemingly sea of creativity. He picks up a gift that he got from the House of Contemplation, a little vial that has popped open. <sighs> <sighs> And with that, his mind and all the troubles, all the, for this brief moment, those repetitious thoughts of rage and violence subside. And he picks up the music and begins to play. And as he does, the song soothes that sea of rage. And for a moment, things feel all right as they are. But deep down, deep inside, that ember burns bright. And his enemies will know its flame. They shall all know its rage. But yet, he can't help but wonder what it must be like to not sleep a night without having such thoughts of violence run through the mind like satyrs through a field of wine. Well, thank you all for that, and uh, good night, everybody. Play within the ring of fire. It's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, yeah.